Hi. Hello. Hello. God damn it, V. You're echoing. One second. Chat. Yeah, let's hit my chat. We are live, by the way. Hello, chat. V needed Sorry, to man. urinate, and then he needed to turn on his speakers. Can we say urinate? I believe we are allowed to say urinate. That's good. It's difficult to keep right. up with the banned words these days, but I believe urination is still acceptable. Oh, that's great. I mean, uh, the rules are ever-changing, so every day it's like a couple of new words getting banned. It's, it's kind of difficult to express yourself. That is true. We start out I with uh, a handful of super chats already coming in before we start, so we might as well get through those immediately. Hello, uh, the possum says, I heard a rumor from Doomcock that Disney might want to sell Lucasfilm. Do you think that they will sell it, and would that be a good idea? He then says, I will not be able to watch this one. I got an ad saying that are hot and single women in my area, and I don't want to keep them waiting. Wise. They move on awfully quickly, those hot and single women. See, I heard the rumor, and, and you need to take it to the grain of salt chat, because it's just a rumor, but I heard that Doomcock is dead. But it's just a rumor, right? Like... So for those of you who don't know, Doomcock makes uh, predictions that often do not come to pass. And he usually says it's a rumor. <sighs> do, do you watch Doomcock, Arch? No. As, as much as I hate to slag off a fellow content creator, I think most of Doomcock's rumors emerge from his ass. Yes. I think he managed to get a couple right in the beginning, which is why he got quite famous. But after that... It was bad rumor after bad rumor after bad rumor. And then there was this meme saying that he died and he had to address it, saying that he was fine. But it was basically like people making fun of him. Because, okay, uh, the idea of Disney selling Lucasfilms. Why? why? Why would they sell Lucasfilms? Like, they paid billions for that damn thing. They still haven't earned back their investment even. I mean, what was it? Um, they acquired it for $4 billion billion dollars in 2012 like i i cannot imagine they would just sell that now that'd be the only way weird they would sell it the only way they would sell it is if they're in huge financial distress which is not there yet yeah they they would have to be like actually crashing like it, it would be at the point where they'd have to sell off their theme parks or like go bust at or lucas films because bearing in mind too star wars for what it is is still one of Disney's larger money cows at the moment because they can continuously produce Star Wars shows. Uh, they also have currently have plans for more Star Wars movies. In fact, that's one of the topics today where they uh, talked about Rey, the cardboard box that speaks, returning for several more movie-related roles. So, no, I, I, I don't think so. And I do not see the... Again... It's like, what? Well, this is one of those Kathleen Kennedy rumors, like, oh, this time she'll totally be fired. Like, I don't see it. And the toys. I mean, they, they probably sell a lot, and then they have, like, that cheap-ass-looking hotel, very cringe-inducing, where you pay, like, I don't know, what is it, like, $2,000 per night? That one's you, uh, you... apparently doing okay. Yes, that's what I'm saying, right? So why would they sell the franchise? And Grogu is like the one toy they have that sells well. So again, like, it, they've got a bit too much success to sell it. Like, Star Wars has not been a flop. Not, not to mention, well, you bring up a good point about the Star Wars Hotel. If they'll sell Lucasfilms, I, I guess they could strip it off the IP and just sell, like, the studio. But again, like, why? No, I don't think they would sell it. Because also the Star Wars Hotel, like, they have to own the Star Wars brand to be able to operate the hotel they put millions into. Like, eh, doubt it. And this looks so awful, god damn it. And, and not only it's awful, it's so expensive. Um, if you look at it, it's like you're in a Supermax prison when you're in that hotel. Oh, like, I don't know if you have any pictures of it, but it's it's awful. I've seen, like, some, some video clips from people who were at it, and I'm sure eight-year-old me would have been absolutely, like, crazy overjoyed at this. Mm. But, like, as a parent, you best have a fair bit of free spending money. 
I mean, it was so awful that people who were sharing videos of that hotel got taken down by Disney because, like, they were embarrassed by that. There were some of them that were pretty bad. Um, the the rooms, for example, got a lot of flack because the main bed looks looks sizable, but then you got like the weird like sleepy pods for children on the side. Uh, the rooms are yeah. kind of small. Uh, the the food is fairly basic. Like, it's not a super high budget thing, really, but. It's more about the live-action actors, you know, who go around and play with your children, so you can go off and have sex in the Star Wars bedroom for a while, I guess. Yeah, you'd expect that for $2,000, you'd get more out of your buck. Apparently, the chat is saying that the hotel is barely running now, so... Is it? I uh, heard they were the uh, they did. had a lot of pre-orders, but that might have changed, too. Yeah. I mean, we did have the COVID thing, so maybe... It affected the hotel but it does look claustrophobic i do agree alex hoffman says happy easter everyone happy easter indeed well you see you had it they celebrate it the wrong way easter is next week also Orthodox uh Christmas. what was it Can I find the article on that? So as you, you brought the um, the pandemic up. Did you see Fauci's recent announcement? No, can we talk about it? Because it's YouTube. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> there was um, a recent talk show interview. God damn, it's been, it's been scrubbed pretty hard. It looks there have like... been people who... Who lost their channel for talking about the CDC guidelines, just saying. That's true. Like, uh, he, he was talking about how he was uh, totally preparing for a new pandemic and stuff, which makes me wonder, you know, what Fauci did Well... You, did your friends it's, tell it's you be- something? <laughs> it's better to be prepared than not, right? I suppose. I'm sure the, uh, the entertainment industry will take another blow like that. Uh, Alex Hoffman also gets 10 Archcast memberships. Thank you very much, Alex. I will also give you access to the uh, exclusive member streams that I've started doing uh, now as well. Uh, he also gives another 50 Archcast memberships. Okay, Jesus. Well, that's a lot. Thank you very much, Alex. Greatly appreciated. Uh, you in the chat should say... Say sorry? Well, I'm sorry. Apologize for receiving it. No, thank you. That's the word I was looking for as well. Uh, Doc Wintry says, So I can literally let uh, KK cremate what's left of Luke's film instead of recognizing Jean Favreau was his only means of stopping this mess. Uh, Favreau, too, is... I mean, he's hardly doing that well either, in my opinion. But, like, okay. Let's let's talk about the Mario movie, right? Because yes. this is the, the interesting thing right now, and I'll put it in the uh, link channel once I discover where I put the link channel. There we go. So, Mario... It was one of those interesting little situations where a lot of people were looking at Mario and going like, okay, this is obviously going to be a flop. Kind of like Avatar The Way of Water. And I think in part this is because we have gotten way too used to being the the defensive underdog here. Like, we, we feel like we need to lash out against everything that might be popular and hope that it fails so that we can kind of be like, ah, I told you that popular thing would fail. But... Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's going to be ours. And The Way of Water was perfectly serviceable. Like, it was a fairly basic bit story, and in many ways it was literally just the first Avatar movie again. But, alright. It works. One of the only movies where I rooted for the bad guys. Yeah, the, like, the whole human interaction too is still stupid, but... Mario. I mean, it... Okay. It it did okay. In fact, it, it seems to be doing really well, uh, beating Frozen 2 as the fastest-selling uh, animated movie ever. So, Jesus Christ, this is, appears to be a smash success. I heard that they advertised the princess as girl boss, but within the actual movie, she's uh, very nice to Mario, falls in love with him, and supports him throughout the way. Sort of. Um, there is there is definitely the girl bossy moments in there, no doubt about it, because... Um, Mario, the, the first things he does when Mario uh, interacts with Peach the first time, uh, Peach judo throws him, you know, so as to establish who the boss is. Uh, then she takes Mario off to do some trial stuff, to uh, bounce on the blocks and do the derpy, uh, 
platforming stuff. And she nails it effortlessly on the first try, and Mario can't do it even once. And then when Mario's down, like, oh, this is too hard, princess, what I'll do? And she's like, no, no, I was totally bad at that, too. It's like, really? No, I, I did it on the first try when I tried it, too. <sighs> well, uh, th- did you hear about the the actor that used to play Luigi in the first Mario, and then he complained that they didn't cast any Spanish people in the movie? Yes, I did. So so he basically says that he's Latin. And Latin, uh, you need to, like, Latin is Latin, right? Because it's Mexico, not Mexico. So. But anyway, right? So so he's saying that Latin are, like, 30% of the U.S. population. And because of that, he doesn't feel represented that he will not watch this movie. Which is a tragedy for him. It is, but, like, I, what I find interesting is that this movie is a Japanese IP, right? And the Japanese do not cast any Asians in this movie. Well, it's because the Japanese don't really care, do they? <laughs> No, no, because it's not about representation. It's about relatability. And it's, and it's one of the, the benefits of the movie. Okay, so Princess Peach absolutely is the girl boss. Like, honestly, if Mario wasn't there, she would probably have solved the situation just fine by herself. Like, there's a couple of times where she's in mild danger, but then immediately beats up her captors and escapes anyways. So it's like, it, it might have caused some more casualties if Mario, Mario wasn't there. But he was hardly the the big hero of the movie. But but does she demean Mario? Does she make Mario feel like uh, a joke character because she's there? Uh, at one point, she does. Uh, most of the time, she doesn't. But there is one point where the people ask, like, who is this guy? Point to Mario. And she's like, he's not important. And then goes off to save the world. Hmm. I mean, you know, if it's like one joke, maybe it's fine. Um, but if it's like all over the movie, then it's woke. Yeah, like, it's not bad. Like, she is the wokest character of the bunch, and if she had just been normal, it would probably have been have a far more delightful family romp. I will also say this. This is not a movie aimed at, you know, the adult audience that played Mario. Mm-hmm. This is very much so a kid's movie. It does have a lot of references for us uh, older generations as well, but it is through and through a children's movie, which is fine. It's a children's movie. So did you enjoy it? Uh, n- meh, not really. Like, f- f- again, for me, it's far too childlike. Um, but again, I'm not the target audience here, and there was relatively little wokeism in it beyond the peach things, and it had very little representation. It had some really good jokes. Some of them really landed. Some of them less so. And it it respected the IP. It resisted the urge, because there were so many scenes where you were just sitting there like, uh, oh, right, they're gonna humiliate one of the characters now, and they didn't, which is rare these days, because almost always when you're watching something like this, they can't help but take some pot shot at the characters, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, let's see, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, like, recently, they had their director coming out to say that they emasculated their, their hero. Yes. Like I, that, yeah. so, they deliberately yeah. emasculated the hero. Yes. Whereas here, Mario um, does get the opportunity to do some stuff. I guess uh, Sonic would be another example, right? Like, would, would you say it's comparable to Sonic? Because they're both uh, video game characters for children, basically. Okay, so if we're going to compare it to Sonic, which is an interesting comparison as well, all right? The Sonic movies... <sighs> okay. Okay. That's, hmm, that's a difficult one. Oh, I, put, I put you in a pickle now. I, I put you in the corner. Yeah, because qu- qualitatively, I would actually say that the Mario movie is probably better because it's a bit shorter, it's a bit more self-contained, and it kind of gets to the point a little bit quicker, you know? And it, it finishes in a in a nice, quick amount of time. All of the characters do what they're supposed to do. There's only minor annoyance with Peach. But at the same time, the Sonic movies had uh, Jim Carrey as Dr. Eggman, and he was just goddamn amazing. Yeah, Jim Carrey carries. Yeah, he was great. So it, it it's a little bit of a mix-up. I'd probably say the Mario movie is slightly better. And that I may actually watch it. The thing is too, right? Because it has relatively little work for what it is. It's relatively short. It's relatively self-contained. It does what it needs to do and gets out, kind of. And 
this is something that you can't say about anybody else, can you? Like Marvel. Marvel doesn't make short self-contained stories anymore. Every goddamn movie is a trilogy. DC doesn't make self-contained or short or punchy movies anymore. Every one of their movies is either an origin story or a reboot again. Like, nobody really does this. And so Disney and uh, Universal Studios have kind of moved in here and gone like, okay, we're just going to give you an entertaining movie. And that's it. And I appreciate that. Detective Pikachu was a one-off. Didn't that get a sequel? No. Did it? Hmm. No. Are you sure? No, they were, like, uh, what would they do? Because it's like the father was the Pikachu, and then they helped the father get out of the Pikachu. So, like... I felt... I, I thought I heard about it, too. But, okay. You know, that was a self connecting thing, too. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because, like, the, the story, again, ended with the father breaking out of the Pikachu. So, like, you don't have a talking Pikachu for a, a sequel now. Hmm. I haven't watched it, so. It's it's good shit. But it, it is definitely a bit of a breath of fresh air. Because it's a story that does what it needs to do. And then just kind of like, okay, the movie's over now. You can leave. You have no further installment in, in this movie franchise. Like there, There's not going to be like a... Uh, a forced sequel after this. This it, 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 it was good enough to stand on its own. Like the, the villain is defeated, sort of. Nobody dies. Mario and Luigi. Save Brooklyn. Kinda. Yeah. I I think... I think Disney... Not Disney. I think Nintendo and Universal Studios might be onto a good thing here. If they can just kind of keep making entertainment relatively simplistic like this, they will continue getting nice big box office hits. The question is, though, if the greed won't start taking over. Because Marvel 2 started with fairly, like, self-contained stories. Like, Iron Man 1 was a, you know, pretty one-and-done story. Um, the original Thor as well, you know. The... And then they started seeing the dollar signs and thinking, okay, but what if we just made 17 of these? <laughs> Does Nintendo even have more IPs? Oh, hell yes. I mean, even just I mean, within the um, the Super Mario family, like, they've got dozens of games that they could adapt into various settings. They've got loads more characters. Like, people have been begging for Wario to take more of a center stage, for example. Um, they could literally do a Luigi movie. They could, hell, they could literally just do a Princess Peach movie. So that's clearly what they want to do. I mean, a Luigi with, uh, what, what is his name? Boo, um, the, the ghost. Yep, the, Ooh, one the ghosts. Yeah, yeah. You think they would ever make Bowsette, though? Not in the foreseeable future, no. But uh, Zelda? A Zelda movie would probably do excellently. You know, make it, oh, yeah, they, they, make it a yeah. pinch they, more adult, just a little bit. Hmm. Do they have, like, that bounty hunter, Samus Aran, as well? I believe so. Isn't Samus? A... I'm not. I'm not really familiar with the because, like, I didn't grow up with that. I had communism when I grew up, That's so true. like, I I do not know the Nintendo games at all. Um, I'm, but... I am I am pretty sure that you're right. That Metroid is a Nintendo property. Yeah, I mean that could be a mature thing, right? Sure. Well, not mature, but like for adults. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they've also got, of course, you know, they could do more Pokemon if they want to, obviously. Hmm. Though, again, Pokemon, I, Pokemon's already getting movies and TV series and stuff, so I don't know how much more they could really do with it, frankly. But you got um, their old school stuff, like um, F-Zero, you know, the racing series with uh, the Falcon Punch dude. I uh, think I know, yes. Yep, they've got Yoshi. You know, you can make some cutesy nonsense with that too. Uh, Splatoon, a more of a, a modern day generation kind of stuff, you know? Yoshi would be actually very hard to do, I think. I don't know. Like, you could, again, just adapt like Baby Mario or something where Yoshi have to take care of Mario because he's a screaming child now. Uh, maybe, yeah, like maybe for a kid's thing it would work. Yep. A hell of a Smash Bros. movie. <laughs> Just make it stupid, brawly nonsense. You know, they have actually, they've got a lot of properties. And again, like this is the, uh, the irritating situation, right? Because Disney is flopping again and again and again. Marvel is cooling back on their production schedule. DC can't stop shooting themselves in the foot. 
the market is open. I guess it, they just need to walk on in and take it, really. Yep. And not to mention, we actually need some entertainment. At least this was original, quote unquote. Yeah. Like it's not a sequel. Yeah, and again, it is not bad. It it does what it needs to do fairly well. Uh, it beat out Dungeons and Dragons by a hilarious quantity. <laughs> The Dungeons and Dragons oh, movie. Everybody is praising that so hard. Oh my yeah. god, it's so amazing. It's so fun. great. Oh. But it doesn't seem to be selling that well. Like, it's it's doing about as well as John Wick Chapter 4, which at this point, that's getting to be a tired franchise. Do you think it's because Critical Drinker praised it? Because I, I noticed this on the internet. I don't know how true it is. But, like, before Critical Drinker made his praise, everyone was hating on Dungeons and & Dragons, and then Critical Drinker says it's good, and everyone's like, oh, yes, well, it's actually a very good movie. I don't know. I haven't watched it myself, but I've just been seeing that everyone's been licking its taint, even though it doesn't seem to do particularly well at the box office. Like, it's 13 million in the first three days. That's not awful, but it's not exactly a smash success, either. I think it's uh, due to the... Uh, it's not that interesting, Right, like, you watch the trailer, and you watch that, and it's like you've seen that movie a thousand times before. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll watch it when it uh, comes out on, you know, certain websites. But I, I don't have my hopes up. Yeah. Oh, Star Fox movie. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, too. Honestly, genuinely, a Star Fox movie would work out pretty goddamn well. Because Star Fox has always had a little bit of more of an action-y actually tilt to it and hell i would uh, hell th think about how amazingly popular top gun was right so just take yeah. top gun formula uh dumb it down for the kids because you know it's a child's movie after all and then just have star fox in her his fighter just blasting shit i'd watch that yeah me too serviceable yep nice and furries would watch it oh yeah, god yes. would watch it. yeah all right uh, it'd be a, a hit in germany Couple more of the super chats. Uh, Mark Shame says, Arch, name your price for a Chaos Dwarf playthrough of Total War Warhammer 3. Well, I was actually gifted the goddamn DLC uh, today. So uh, I'll, 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 I'll do something for it. I'll do like a, um, a supporter exclusive and then I'll maybe like upload the recording of that uh, for everybody. It's out? Uh, no, I think it's out in a few more days. Mm. You know what I hate about the Warhammer? They they used to have like this lore on buildings, like you'd right click on a building and you'd get like a lot of lore. Do you know they they got rid of that? Oh, not Warhammer, like Credit Assembly, Total War. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I know. Uh, it's been gone since like Medieval Two, and I too I loved it because you could click on anything, buildings, units, and there was a whole lore blurb for it, and that was really yes. cool. Yeah, that, but like Total Warhammer One has it. And you can, uh, you know, read about the factions and you get a lot of the lore and you get the immersion. Um, but, like, they removed it in Total Warhammer 2 and they haven't added it in 3 either. And I don't know why, because it's like how hard it is to write some text. Well, it would require them to give a shit, which is difficult. Yeah. Uh, Mark Shame says, a Rotten Tomato score ranking, low critic plus low audience, high critic audience, current, yep, low audience, yep. Um, basically the critics hated Mario, and I saw some of the reports too, they were basically complaining that it wasn't complex enough of a movie, like it didn't tell complex enough of a story, I was like, dude, this is a movie adaptation of a video game from, what, the 80s? Which is basically, go to the castle, rescue the princess. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> so what were you expecting like shakespeare why like literally the 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 idea for mario the original idea uh was basically the the creators had like a fat italian dude who was their landlord who <laughs> was italian and it's like mario italian mario ah, that fat plumber dude and like he kills turtles and that was it like he... <laughs> You are not going to get that complicated a goddamn movie story out of that. I mean, back in the day, the cartridges didn't have that much memory, so you needed to have a very, very simple story so that the player like has an idea what's going on. Most of the stories were 
not on the cartridge, but you would have them written on the game's manual. Yep. So you you'd buy like a video game from Sega or whatever, um, and you have like Sonic the 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 cartridge, and you have like within the manual what is happening, and it would tell you that Doctor Robotnik stole Sonic's friends and is making them into robots. But like, you you wouldn't know that from playing the video game. And it doesn't need to be that goddamn complex either. Again, it's children's entertainment. And they've got some good scenes in uh, Mario 2 that are really, like, dark and spooky, which I'm sure kids would uh, love, because children love to be afraid. They do. They like it. I mean, That's when nice. I was a kid, you know, I, I watched all those uh, horror movies, like uh, Freddie Mercury and Jason that were adult only, and I, I loved it so fucking much. My parents didn't love it, because, like, I wouldn't sleep at night and I would start crying. But, like, either than that, I, I enjoyed watching the movie. The Evil Wholesale says, Did you see that Peach was supposed to be the main character? Nintendo came in and was like, No, it's called Mario Brothers, according to Midnight's Edge reporting. I really? could believe it, because she does come across as very main character. Again, if Mario wasn't there at all, the movie would probably not have ended all that much differently. Because Mario Isn't has like a... a... He's got a fight oh. with Donkey Kong to like earn the... the the monkey people's army, which ends up doing nothing, incidentally. They get their asses pounded, so that was pointless. But even if Pre uh, Preach Peach had to fight Donkey Kong, she would have done so easily. Like, she's way better than Mario in that respect. She's faster, more agile, stronger, does everything better. Like, she even beats the shit out of Bowser. She literally defeats Bowser at one point by just freezing him into, uh, like, ice. Isn't there a video game where Princess Peach is the main character and she does beat Bowser, so it's not, like, outside of the lore? No. But again, like, Mario's role in all of this... <sighs> again, he, he wouldn't even really need to be there. And you can very much so tell that that was the Western influ influence, but I can also very much so believe that the Japanese would be like, no, 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 like, it's the Mario <laughs> Brothers movie. Like, come on. Yeah, at least, at least the Japanese don't shit on their own IP as hard. Yeah, Mario has to win at the end of the day. He's not, he's not going to be Joel. Uh, Henry Stickman says, What I loved about this movie is that if you were a Mario fan, this movie you've been waiting for since the... Oh, God, stop freezing. Since the failure of the abysmal one in 1993. Oh, yeah, like, it has a ton of references. It has lots of the iconic power-ups. It's got all of the iconic things. There's even a um, great little section in the beginning of the movie, which basically shows you a 2D platforming level in the streets of Brooklyn. Like, it is a good fan movie. Well, maybe I'll see it. If you're giving it so much praise. Marksman of 117B says, Months ago, it was rumored that Nintendo stepped in because the studio was making the movie woke and they forced reworks, but some dregs remain as seen. I can sort of see it. Like, I would say that the movie is a bit too consistent to have been messed with too much because it didn't feel like it was disjointed or was like poorly put together except for one part where it kind of seems to like go from one scene to another a little bit quick but i again like the princess peach character you can really tell that they were they were putting in an effort to make her the strong female character of the modern day it's interesting, because if you want to do that, just go with Samus Aran. Uh, Mark Shame says, The Primarchs coming back is marvelizing Warhammer to a point where it isn't Warhammer 40k anymore, but instead Warhammer 50,000. Yeah. No, I, I would tend to agree. Uh, because Did they bring another Primarch? Because like, I, I remember Gilligan being the last one. Uh, no, they brought back the Lion as well. Lionel Johnson. Hmm. Well, by this point, they're probably going to bring back the Emperor as well one day. Yes, they've already basically said that he's operating in the warp as, like, a god entity now, so he's also definitely, essentially, back. No, but, like, actually get him off the chair. Ah, maybe. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Because the issue is, 40k was a very dark universe where, like, death... The old heroes were dead. Like, the old heroes of the Imperium were long gone. They were They were creatures of myth now, you know? But now, they're, all, they're just kind of wandering around again. Like, all of that myth isn't really worth anything because, well, the, the myth's over there. Taking the shit. Weren't there a lot of people in the fandom wanting for the story to progress, though? 
Yes, and I told those people they were wrong, and I believe they were wrong. What happened with the old world? Did they revert back to the original setting, or are they still doing the Age of Sigmar bullshit? Uh, no, the old world is still dead, but they are working on the old world reborn sort of pseudo where they're claiming that they'll bring it back in some form but what they've shown so far just seems like the old world but with an age of sigma coat of paint where there's way too much magic mm. uh noah sprague studios says if we can get a star fox movie that is adequate then i can die happy let's just hope we get one before they get too cocky ah yes Mm. Do a barrel or large. Yes, chat. Uh, Vulcan is has technically been back for ages too. He just chooses to not help the Imperium because he's, you know, plot reasons. <clears throat> Literally, Vulcan has been around since the Horus Heresy. He just doesn't want to help for 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 reasons. Well, Game Goblin, hey, go on. No, I, I was just going to say that um, when, when I heard that they hired the guy which made the uh, Space Marines video, uh, the Astartes, you know, the, the, the four videos that are awesome, mm -hmm. I thought that maybe they're going to have some cool stuff to show, but unfortunately they don't. Well, they've made some excellent uh, sales pitch trailers for their own stuff, I guess. Uh, Game Golden says there was some woke with Peach, but it was fairly contained. Mario felt like a hero. Peach was advertised more girl boss. I wonder if Daddy Nintendo came in and stopped the woke. There seems to be a lot of people who think that. And again, I can certainly see it happening. Yeah, well, it's what you said up until now. The Real Holes Native says I would watch the ever-loving hell out of a goddamn Metroid movie. Could be awesome if uh, a man made it. Yeah, I think a Metroid movie could be excellent. Uh, Urashima Otaru says D&D was mediocre, but it wasn't woke. Well, that's a step in the right direction, isn't it? That's what the director said. Like that, that's why I thought it's not going to be bad, because this is the first time ever that I see a Hollywood director uh, say that, well, no, 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 this isn't woke. Because usually directors try to advertise their product as woke. Yep. They went out of the way to say specifically that it they didn't do it for woke reasons, which is an interesting theory. Yeah. It's like, we did woke, but it's not for woke reasons. Mm -hmm. We we emasculated the character, but... But we did it because he was funny, but... not because... <laughs> yeah, we did not it because he was funny, not because... Yeah, not because social justice, yeah. Ornu says, we all know you will simp for the horny stunties art. You can't resist your Norwegian dwarf luxuria by YouTube's elevator. I can't say freaking luxuria now. Oh, I'm sure there are plenty of YouTube censorship things to get in the way. Uh, Stephen Knizek. Bob Hensky will always be my Mario, even more than Lou Albana. I didn't hate the Mario voice actor, but I didn't love him either. He was like, okay. I, I never understand the controversy behind the voice actor. As long as it sounds similar to the character, then it's fine. Uh, Ornu says that stupid comment took six tries to get through the sentences. Up yours, YouTube. Up yours. Don't worry. It'll take seven soon. The Real Horse Nader says the original script apparently was way worse and Nintendo vetoed it. And he also says V. Salmus isn't the strong modern woman. She isn't vindictive, spiteful, and petty. At least not yet. Oh my god, did you yep. see what they did to Princess Leia in the Disney animated thing? Oh yes, oh yes, I watched that. Where, um, like, there's one scene where she actually just pushes Luke's out of the way, grabs his blaster, and then kills the stormtroopers for him. Yeah, like, Luke is a bumbling idiot, and she's uh, just, like, annoyed that they didn't rescue her better, I guess. And she's, like, filled with bloodlust. Like, you can see it on her face, she's scaring everyone else. Just how bloodthirsty she is. Mark James says, I saw an X2 mod called Star Fox Event Horizon, as one of the cutscenes and voice acting is great. That's good to know. I definitely think they could do a Star Fox movie too. Well, as I said, it would tap into that furry market. It's a good market. It's got a lot of money inside of it. My god, some of the furries are so rich. Like, if you look at furry artists that draw mediocre art, and yet they charge around $1,000 for it, it's insane. 
Okay, speaking of, as we've, uh, we're moving sort of on the, the topic here of, like, heroes and Disney and uh, now Nintendo, etc. So, I don't know if you saw this one here in the link room. Uh, the Mandalorian producer Rick Fumuiwiwiwi, or something, has confirmed that the titular Mandalorian is no longer considered to be just Din Djarin. As season 3 explores more of the Mandalorians as a people instead of just a person. Uh, this. weren't they, like, supposed to be a group of people? They are. But, um, the thing is, the Mandalorian has switched away from, you know, being the, about the Mandalorian, Bounty Hunter. And now it's mm -hmm. more about the woman Mandalorian. Ah, yes, of course. So, like, the reason it was so good in season one, I believe it's because it was reproducing Western movies. Yes. And it had, like, literal Western tropes. Like, you, you have, like, this village of weenies that are unable to defend themselves, and they're being attacked by bad people. But the Mandalorian comes in, and they the, the weenies pull in all their resources to hire him. So, like, that that is a Western American movie. Like, there, there's, like, a dozen of them done by the same plot. Yes. And that's why it was successful, because it works. Whereas now, um, Jin, like, pa Pablo, um, Pedro, Pablo, Pascal, Pedro, mm -hmm. Pablo, I can't forget it. Uh, he doesn't really have a reason to be in the show anymore. Like, he starts out going, like, he needs to go to the Mandalore and bathe in the sacred waters to regain his honor for having taken off his helmet, okay? He does that in, like, episode two. And after that, his journey is done. Like, he has no more reason to be in this show. And so instead, the entire story is centered around Vumexen, which is his new female sidekick. And she is the plot now. Like, we are following her plot as she is plotting to regain control of a Mandalore and become its queen. Was it um, Pedro quitting? Because, like, he was upset that he can't take off his helmet, but, like, all the other women that came were taking off their helmets? Because, like, they, they had, like, a plot reason for that to happen. Maybe. It wouldn't surprise me, because from what I've heard, this this is... A, we, we were yelling at Doomcock for using too much rumor-mongering, but this is absolutely a, a rumor as well. I've heard some bumpings around that Pedro did throw a little bit of a hissy fit uh, to show his face in The Mandalorian, and so he did in that one episode. And... Let me check. I think, I think he quit. Because I don't know, because now he's wearing the helmet again, but he's kind of not in the show anymore, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were writing him out. Because uh, I also know that they decided to change the mushroom things in The Last of Us to no longer be airborne, so that they didn't need to wear masks. And it's like, hmm, it's a bit sus, Okay, isn't so it? apparently, according to this, Pedro Pascal is not the only actor who helps bring uh, Din Durgin to life in The Mandalorian. Apparently, he's not always in the suit. Mm. Um, yeah. So, apparently, uh, he says that... Blah, 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 the importance of the former being cast out of his cover for daring to remove his helmet. Uh, and uh, blah, blah, huh? Yeah, so there's basically many actors that uh, use the battle word. Because I was wondering, like, how is he doing uh, two TV shows? Right? Like, um, I think... He, he stars in another one, right? He, he's in The Last of Us. And how is he doing The Mandalorian as well? Well, it's kind of thing. Okay, so there's also, like, um, there was this article here. Uh, Pedro Pascal is no longer the Mandalorian. Like, they're very clearly moving away from him. And whether that is because he wanted more of a spotlight or because he wants to quit or because the writers want to replace him, I don't know. But his role in the series has been drastically reduced, almost you know, practically written out of the show at this point. Well, it makes sense. It usually what happens with uh, actors that work on two productions. So in his case, he's working on The Last of Us and he's working on The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is kind of the issue, okay? Because Nintendo gave us a movie where Mario was just Mario. Nice and simple. Every, all, all everybody will ask for. And Disney and everybody else is moving in the exact opposite direction. So the Mandalorian is no longer about the Mandalorian. It's about some chick that was introduced in season two as a not Mandalorian. Okay. 
And Grogu's there and just moans at the camera occasionally, like, blah, 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 blah. I'm uh, merchandise. Buy me. The only uh, TV show that actually stood true up until now, and it's probably going to stay true next season, is uh, Cobra Kai. <laughs> probably. Like, it has no reason to uh, screw over the currently winning formula. It's got a lot of female characters but they're like not taking the spotlight the the male characters are not being humiliated or pushed away the female characters aren't vindictive and they're beautiful by the way like all the actresses are gorgeous like it's um the orville all over again well not all hashtag have you seen it yes that uh, the um initial group of like cobra kai trainees was very diverse including fat chick who beats the shit out of all the boys yeah, but that was, like, a, a comedy thing. And it makes sense. Like, her body was, like, massive. Like, she was twice the size of the boys, so. But Cobra Kai does a very good job of... Like, Cobra Kai is basically, like, an 80s television show. It's very predictable. Painfully so, almost. But it kind of... It can be. Because it's just, like, you know what you're watching. It's an 80s TV show. And it's very... True. To what it is. It doesn't pretend to be more than that, if that makes sense. Yeah, does it have to be? No, it doesn't. I mean, it's a show where karate gives you superpowers, so... Yeah. Nice and simple. Like, like a, yeah, like a 10-year-old a, a child can beat the, an adult professor using karate. Yep. I would, I would highly recommend watching Cobra Kai. It's actually quite good. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Of course, speaking of uh, Disney again, this also then moves us on to one of the uh, main topics of today, because Daisy Ridley, Ray, the cardboard box that speaks, mm -hmm. is set to return in a new Star Wars movie where she will rebuild the Jedi Order. I wonder why are they purposefully tanking their own production? I... I... Like, it's like bringing Jar Jar Blinks back, but, like, Jar Jar Binks actually has a character. Well, like, you, you could just cast anyone, literally anyone. Why would you cast the controversy? I think it's because she's one of them. You know, she, she's a bit on the inside. She knows the people who work there. She's been, you know, filleting the correct cocks, etc., and Disney doesn't want to admit that Disney Wars was a failure. Like, they, they really don't want to. And in a way, it wasn't. Because, I mean, it earned its money back. So I'm betting the, disparate, the, the, the Disney corporate suits are kind of like sitting around the table going like, well, I mean, it, it did work. But people really hated it, though. Yeah, but... I mean, it did earn money. Did it sell the toys, Arch? Did it sell the toys? Because I, I noticed a lot of toys. Like, like, you couldn't find Vader action figures. You couldn't find Luke action figures. But there were so many Rey action figures. The only toy that actually sold um, was, um, what was it? Kylo Ren. Right? Like, and, and it probably didn't sell because of his character either. It sold just because the armor was cool. Yes, and Kylo also managed to get a little bit of a niche fandom in thirsty women. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. I think it's for that scene reason. where where he is shirtless. But but he's shirtless and he looks massive. Like I don't even know if he that's CGI enormous. or that's the And he he's got like yeah. grandma underwear up to his armpits. I don't I don't get it. What was it like CGI or does the actor literally look like that? God knows. But again, like they're probably thinking to themselves, like, okay, we, but we, we, we could probably milk a couple more profitable movies out of this, you know, before it completely crashes and burns. Maybe I guess the way the, the way it works, right? Like each movie does significantly worse than the last. Mm -hmm. So you know, there there is that goodwill of the fans that you're running out of. Yes. Look at but... her looking at me like that. Like I, I feel like she's raping me with her eyes. Jesus fucking Christ. There is also man. an opportunity here. Like, okay, if I'm going to be hyper-optimistic, and I don't think this is going to happen, mind you, because uh, mm. all they've really talked about is that um, Rey will be tasked with rebuilding the all-but-extinct Jedi Order. You know, what Luke was doing before he was like, I think I'm going to kill my best friend's son. <laughs> but what I would do, I would, I would kill the bitch. I would kill the bitch on camera. 
and I would kill her <laughs> to introduce the new threat. Like, make a movie where she's being her usual Mary Sue, and, like, she's set up a school in the jungle, and everything's amazing. She's training Lily Yadai, okay? It's, it's paradise. And then Thrawn or something moves in. Or even better, try to invent a new villain, but make him scary. Have the new villain just annihilate Rey. Like, actually kill Rey. Like, burn down the school. Everything's horrible. And then build it up from there. Like, try to build a cult of personality around the villain. Because that was in many but, ways what launched the original Star Wars. It was Darth Vader. But Arch, Arch. Like, what if she pulls the second sword? On the villain. Oh, then you kill her again. Because like I remember with Emperor Palpatine, like he was doing oh. the lightning and and she was like taking damage, but then she pulls the second sword. Kill her. And when she unites the first sword and the second sword, for some reason, like that actually works against the Emperor's lightning. Kill. Just. But kill. like, what 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 if she, what what if she pulls the third sword dart? Just kill. She's, because Rey she needs uses... to goddamn die. Like, Rey is an awful character. Her, in her entire bullshit thing is built up around how she is so goddamn perfect with zero training, etc. Kill Rey. <laughs> Kill Rey So what you're today. saying is, what, what you're saying is, like, I, I can imagine watching Star Wars, the new episode, and, like, Arch appears in the corner, like, Kill the past, buddy, if you have to. Okay, no, no, no. Let the past live. Kill today. <laughs> But, okay, they could also introduce, like, the, the Uzang Bong or whatever the hell they were called. Um, yeah, yeah, they were cool, yeah. And, like, none of her force powers would work on them. Because you could do that, I just, like, burn the entire Star Wars galaxy basically to the ground and start over again. And, honestly, I would find that more interesting than what they're currently doing. Because, okay, let's say that she starts rebuilding the Jedi Order. All right, uh, Why? Why should I care, V? Okay, they, they've they defeated Palpatine, again. The secret Imperial fleet is destroyed, again. The First Order is smashed, again. What? What's, what's left in this universe? Like, the New Republic is dead. Is there anything but shit and ashes left? Well, the idea of the Jedi Order, uh, according to Star Wars lore, is that if left uncontrolled, the Force users can be very dangerous, like psychers from 40k. So, like, they need training in order not to cause damage to the people around them. Sure, sure. But, like, the entire Star Wars universe at this point is just destroyed. Like, there's no power structure left. Like, oh, Well, I'm pretty sure you have, like, the criminals, right? So the huts would probably be the ones in charge. Like, the goddamn hot cartels have taken over. Yeah. Like that that's how I would write it. Like if you if you don't have the Imperium and you don't have the Republic, then you'd have like smugglers and huts everywhere. <laughs> or, or alternatively, and this is probably what Disney will do, uh the Imperium will still be there, like just forever. <laughs> just, they're there, like we're the second order. Okay, what's this? We're the second new republic. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, they could be at the fringes, I guess. Because, like, it's a big galaxy, and just, like, cutting off the head doesn't mean, like, everything dies, right? Well, no, but, I mean, that secret fleet was, like, the last bid of the Imperium. Because the New Republic was already blown up by the Death Star 3.0. Like, mm -hmm. Again, like, there's, there's just no story in Star Wars left at this point. They need to burn it to the ground, which they practically have already. Kill Ray, mount her head on a pike, and then start over again. The problem with Ray is that there's nothing cool about her. Like, like I remember uh, when I was watching the Clone Wars, there was like this pale chick which had two swords, and she was very agile. It was interesting, you know. Uh, Ahsoka or whatever her name is, the uh, the Padawan of Anakin. Like, she's really cool because she's got like some backstory to her. But like with Ray, there, there's literally nothing. Like, you can just put any Jedi instead of her. And you have Rey. Like, there, there's nothing that... She, she doesn't have any cool moves. She doesn't have any cool abilities. She doesn't have any cool fighting styles. She doesn't have any cool expressions, any cool lore, any cool story. There, there's just nothing. Well, her her cool story is that she can do everything. Uh, and that she can do the dark side and the light side. And it doesn't matter to her. That's, that's her cool story. The cool story is that she's a Padawan and a Skywalker. Yeah. And she steals shit. 
Like she she is the best thief. Like like she she's a better thief than Solo. Like she took his spaceship. She took um the 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 laser sword. From, sorry, the, the 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 lightsaber from um from yeah, from Luke. Um, like I I think she even has Darth Vader's helmet, if I remember correctly. Uh, she took uh, Luke's farm. Uh, the the droids. Did she take them? I I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure she did. Yeah, no, she is. She has taken everything from him. She, she is the Skywalker now. Like literally, the only thing that's left, I think, was the mantle that Luke had, and, and once he died, like the mantle fell over. I'm willing to bet she returned to that planet just to take that mantle, or burn it just out of spite. Uh, no, like Star Wars just needs to kill Ray because it's it's just it's a universe devoid of purpose right now. Because again, I mean, hell, the in, the the oh god, three the, the third movie, like the introduction. Th did you watch that in cinemas, V? Yes. Because I remember the moment when the intro text was scrolling, and we got to the point somehow Palpatine returned, and I wasn't even yes, angry. Was I just gave up at that point. I just surrendered. Like, okay, <laughs> sure, That's go right. ahead. Yeah, 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 like I, you know, they announced the emperor, and I was like, "Oh, I'm really interested to see how, it, like, what they do in order to get him back." You know, like, is it some interest? No, no, it's just like in the text. It's like, yep. oh yeah, by the way, he's back. He's back like, now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, God, that that's like the worst storytelling ever. That was the worst. I, it was just a moment of actual surrender. Like, I I couldn't resist <laughs> at that point. You're just like, yep, yep, go ahead. Please, please, sir. And that's the thing, too. Like, in a universe where you've already done that, in a universe where you've killed the Republic, where the Empire's been beaten, like, five times, we need to go back to absolute basics. And there could be an opportunity to do this here. Okay, make Rey uh, just, just kill her, uh, scatter the Jedi Order, and then move on to a new character who's, like, the last scared, scattered remnants, and they're fighting the, the Uzang Bong, which are raping the entire galaxy. Everything's death and destruction. Like, grim dark wars. And then begin, begin building it up from there. That could be something, at least. <laughs> And make an Indiana Jones in Star Wars. You have like this explorer who goes to other planets and goes in tombs and, and sift tombs and shit. Like you, you don't really need to actually focus on like the galactic threat all the time. You know, just have like a spin-off to make people forget about the atrocity you've committed. Just have like an Indiana Jones could be a girl or something. You know, they team up with the Jedi and they're they're going into this Sith temple and they're they're finding out some cool artifacts and stuff. Like why why not do that? Well. That is exactly the reason why Rogue One was popular. Because Rogue One yes. just did a thing, and then Rogue One ended, and everybody fucking died. I want everyone yes. to fucking die. Yes. Nice you simple. know, Star Wars meets 40k would be nice. It's like a rift opens up, and you, know, you have the Imperium paying a visit. Not, not, not like the entire Imperium. A million just like lawsuits a of... screaming out in pain from both sides. Mm, yeah, but like, surely they can make that deal happen. Again, just like make make a story about some stormtroopers, because that was the enormous missed opportunity around Finn. Like, oh well, rogue stormtrooper. Okay, like that's kind of cool. How's that gonna work out? It doesn't. He just decides one day to start killing his friends. Just like, yeah. You know what I noticed about that? That I, I like. Excuse me if I'm a little racist here, but did you notice that well, all the black stormtroopers are the ones that are defecting? Like, uh, you, you get to the that point. I think it was like in the episode three. Where they find like other star troopers that leave, and they're literally all like black women and black men, and I think mm. like you would think that the empire would notice a pattern at one point. They would be like, "Well, what? Look, look, I'm I'm not colorblind or anything, but like it does seem that this particular batch of star troopers is uh, a little bit more prone to defecting than than the other batches." Are you saying their skin color somehow makes them defective? I, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is that if you watch episode three again, like like the third in the trilogy, not uh, episode three, it's I think like uh, episode nine, right? Um, you get to the point where like Finn meets other stormtroopers that also left, and they're all people of color. Meanwhile, if you look at the the order, they're all white. There you I mean, go. I'm just saying it's it's just it's just like something that. I mean, look at this, right? Like, if you, um, well, actually, you're in Rogue One, 
But if you were to look at the the spaceship in episode eight, like literally all white men, and meanwhile the rebels, diverse women, strong. That's true. Mm. But yeah, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars just needs to burn. That's literally it. It just <laughs> it needs to burn and needs to start killing its character, and uh, then maybe you can start again from scratch. The thing with Finn as well, right? Like, so, so he's a member of this, uh, you know, order, which I guess like brainwashes people and, uh, you know, gets them to kill innocent villagers and whatnot. Um, and, and he goes back on it, right? Like he he defects. You think he would have a problem killing his other stormtroopers? Like you would think he would feel a little remorse because he would be like, well, I used to be like them, and no, they don't explore that at all. No, not at all. Not in, in fact, no. he he's laughing when he's killing them. Yes, Finn is the worst goddamn character. He genuinely is. Yeah, <sighs> but, and he had so much potential, but but like he's he's just like I don't know a laughing stock, I guess. Like he's he's the Jar Jar Blinks. Like there, there's potential there, but they're not exploding it. No, they're not. They are aggressively avoiding it. And the other guy, what's his name? The pilot? Like, oh. it took two movies for me to realize that he was there. Yeah, he was supposed to be a big deal, too, apparently. Yeah, and, and then, but, like, he's overshadowed by Ray. Like, literally, when Ray gets into pilot mode, she scores a triple kill. Like, I don't, I don't know if you notice it, because it goes really fast on the screen. But, like, she fires one laser and hits three enemy ships. Of course she does, because she's Ray. And at this... At this point, it's like, what? What is the point of your ace pilot? Like, why? Why is he even there? Like, <laughs> well, he's there to be a foil to Admiral Holdo, so Admiral Holdo can you know, beat the shit out of him and be like, ah, oh, well, you know, I like spunky men too, but put him in the shuttle. And even then, right? Like, the entire uh, movie in in the the eighth part is that. Well, he's really bad because he doesn't follow orders. But he manages to take out that planet destroyer, and if he didn't do that, the entire rebel force would be annihilated. Because the, the entire plot is like they're way too far away, and uh, they they are outranging the order. But like, if the order had that ship, which could uh, bombard the planet, like they could just use that to destroy the the rebel force. So basically, he saves their asses. He does. And he also did nothing wrong, because Admiral Holdo did everything wrong. Yeah. You know I had people defending her? No, you didn't. Yes, I did, on no. Twitter. I uh, they're, they're basically like, well, well, like she doesn't have to justify it to the man. Like, when you're in a military environment, you, you have to follow orders. And I'm like... That's a wonderful defense for Nazi Germany. Thank you very much. No, but it's not, it's not even that. It's like, when you're... Like, first of all, it, it's a little bit different than being in a military, right? Because the morale is to the ground. Like, like you, you're not operating in normal situations. You're basically not even behind enemy lines. Like, you, you're in a situation where everyone thinks they're going to die, pretty much, right? A little speech would have done wonders, you know? Like, at least try to raise morale. She doesn't do any of that. And then goes Pikachu face when there's a mutiny. She does a good job of fermenting that mutiny. Yes. Yes, I'm moving on. The Drekus Luthos says at Holcinator. Also, Samus' is strong maternal instinct. Wasn't she barren or something? I have no idea. Me neither. Artemis Fowl says, Peach seemed like a white woman stuck in a world of only cats, and one day a large dog appeared in front of her. She's desperate for that Italian noodle. The whole... Um, uh, it kind of... Like, the whole romance wasn't really much of a romance. It was just Peach being like, Hello, you're a human. Yes. Ah, oh, cool. That's my Speaking of dogs and short fat otaku, do you know why they don't arrest dogs in prison after women have their way with the dog? Why they don't arrest the dogs? Yes, like why they don't arrest the dogs as well for having sex with men? Because I don't think the dog is really, uh, I can't really give it the legal code uh, treatment. I'm pretty sure one of the requirements of the penal code is that you must be able to understand the penal code. 
No, Arch. It's because if the dog was in prison, he would get love letters from other women. Oh, that too. Women are weird. You should abolish them. Like, what I don't get... There was another case last week. I'm pretty sure you're aware of it. But, like, why do they post it online? The, what? The woman who got arrested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know about that, right? Like, there's another case. Oh, no, no. She posted... No, okay, sorry. Yes, no, she posted it online, you mean? Yes. Yes. Well, because yes. uh, some people are in a living doing that. We're in the, the age of uh, webcam models and stuff, V. Yeah, but, like, it's a crime. Yeah, but she didn't know it was a crime. Ah, so, like, she's going to plead ignorance. Well, but, you know, there so was the law another... is no defense, sadly. There, there was another case last month, and this one is even more interesting. So, apparently, the son found that his parents were doing that to their dog. And he turned them over to the cops. Good. Defend Vido. But you know, that, 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 but like, see, th this is interesting. You you find your pa like like your own flesh and blood. Like, what do you do? Do you at least confront the parent and say like, if I see this shit again, then I will go to the cops? Like, do you even give them one strike? No. Or do you just go to the cops directly? Why would you give them one strike? This is a, uh, this is not a minor crime. No, but it's your family. Yeah. So, <laughs> they're not my. Actually, no, they're not my family. No, but, like, I'm, I'm talking hypothetically. Disavow. Like, you find this. Disavow. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. But, like, hypothetically, you find this shit. Like, what do you do with it? You know? It's it's complicated, Dark. It's not so simple. I don't know if it is that complicated. Hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's actually pretty simple. Apparently, Stop the father was the filming. Well, the, the father was filming, and the mother was doing it. Cease. And they were videotaping it. They're probably selling it too. I'm sure there's a thriving ecosystem around this. Hmm. Unironically, I am like, sure there is. I think it's like a 4K quality thing. Well, I don't know. Like, it doesn't strike me as the kind of thing you would, you know, do in studio quality because illegal and all. I mean, it depends where, because in some places it's not illegal. So it would have to be done under the radar. Yes. But then, then, like, your reputation as the sun goes down. Does it? Yeah, because, like, your mom and dad is going to be in the newspapers, right? Like, there's people at work that see your family name there. True, but you will also be given credit for putting them behind bars where they rightfully belong. Yeah, it, it, it's just, like, I, I looked at that news and I got mindfucked for a couple of minutes. Do you think they allow conjugal visits with the dog? No, I don't think so, though. You sure? Because, like, again, it's... Yeah, because it's like what you said. You know, the dog doesn't have autonomy, so... Yeah, but... Ah, uh, like, can we... How how do we judge if the dog consents? Have we... Have we just said the dog cannot consent? I think, I mean, that's kind I of... I mean, we, 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 we go... Yeah, we go the same way with children, right? They cannot consent, hmm. right? So even if the woman would just, like, sit there and the dog jumps and starts, like, it's still non-consensual. There you go. Dogs and yeah. children. Much the same thing. When it comes to consent. Uh, speaking of, we will be talking about the sexualization of children. And the... In fact, let's just do that right now. Naked education. We are not going to be showing you any pictures of this uh, TV show. Because doing so would be against the YouTube Terms of Service. Even if it's on The Guardian. Yes. Uh, so, Naked Education was a show that premiered uh, the other day, a couple of days ago, in the United Kingdom. The premise of the show is that you take, quote, teenagers, unquote, read children, and you put them in a room with a bunch of naked people, and you have them poke and prod at them, so as to supposedly uh, get over their body complexes. Why do they have to get over their body complexes? I don't know, actually. But I'm, I'm, I'm assuming like, they go like, oh, I think me pee-pee small. And so they just bring in five dudes with small pee-pees and point to them like, look, they have small pee-pees too. Don't you feel better? No. No. <laughs> pee-pee still it's small. It's kind of like, yes. This didn't help at all. 
It's kind of like, you know, like, like, let's talk about something completely natural, aging, right? So you're 85 years old, you know, you, you can't get it up anymore, you're, you're very slow, you can't climb up a flight of stairs, and someone is like, hey, look, there's other 85 years old, and they're just like you, does that make you feel better? No. 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 I was going to point out, each episode, teenagers, again, quote, unquote, are educated about the human anatomy and the importance of body positivity. And they couldn't do this with, like, pictures and sketches and drawings or anatomy models or textbooks. No, no, they had to find people, dress them naked, and then show naked people to children. Like, this has nothing to do with education. This is a fetish. See, when I was a kid, and we learned about uh, using condoms in school, they didn't give us a banana or anything like that. Like, they just talked to us like adults, and we understood. Well, see, like, that's there, not there was no, Yeah, there was no movie about it. Like, basically, what they said is that, look, we would prefer if you don't have sex outside of marriage, but... We are also aware of reality. I know some of you will be fucking. So if you are fucking, please use a condom so you don't have to get an abortion or get an STD. Well, it's not even that. Okay. So sex education. You go into the room and you have the cringy speak to the kids. And you give them little banana. <laughs> and it's like, put the condom on the banana. Yes, I know it's funny. Get a move on. We got to get through this. And you give them the speech. Why though? Like, why do you need the banana? This, this is something that I don't understand. It's it's self-intuitive. When you buy the pack of condoms, you even have, like, a picture showing it to you. The people like, are retarded. Uh, they could fuck it up. And why a banana? Why not a pickle? Because a pickle but anyway, right. is far too hmm. bumpy. And gives a, it, it gives, like, the wrong impression. Like, the women in the class will be like, wow, is this what they have? Nah. Wait, in your class, the women had to do the banana thing? Like, in my class, at least it was implied that the man has to do it himself. But, like, I guess, like, some people are into kinky shit, so. But see, that that's fine. That's good. It's cringy, and it's okay. But this, this is not that. This would be if your sex education was that the teacher brought in a dude. Now, just some fat fucker from the neighborhood with a heart on. And he then walks up to your desk and goes like, oh, come on then. I heard that in Sweden they used porn actors to do it. And I and this was when I was a kid, right? And I was like, did you know that in Sweden? They, like, Get the fuck out. There's, there's no fucking way. There is no fucking and now, way. And now I, I am willing to believe that maybe, maybe such an event has had transpired at the time. I'm sure there was some kind of performative art nonsense thing along that. But I'm pretty sure they do it like us and they, they, they put the condom on the on the banana. Did you ever put the condom on a banana, Arch? I mean, I know it's a personal question, but like, I, I don't think it's shameful or anything. You don't think it's shameful? No, it's like when you were younger and, you know, you were in sex ed. Like, did, did you have to put the condom on a banana? Did they make you do that? No, we were given little styrofoam penises. Are you fucking kidding me? Did they actually... Yeah, all styrofoam penises. Oh, my fucking God. Okay, look, look, chat, chat. Oh, I did not put penises. the condom on a banana. And, and do you know how long it took to me to put the actual condom on the actual thing? Less than enough for the woman to get annoyed. Like, I, I have, for some goddamn reason, I have managed to succeed where others require training to perform. Like, it went smoothly. I, I don't understand. The only problem is, like, if you buy a condom from India or some shit, and, like, those are way too small. But, like, other than that, there should be absolutely no problem on why a man should need to do it on a banana first. Like, it's not like you're going to war. You know, like, if, if you're going to face a cavalry charge or some shit, I would understand why you need to simulate that. But, like, you're, you're fucking, like... Arch, like, take over. I, I, I'm lost for words here. Did you eat the banana? No, because I never had one. But you know what? If I did, I would have probably ate it. Why wouldn't I eat the banana? Because now it's covered with that condom goo. Yeah, but it's, it's on the, the yellow peel, right? So you, you peel it off and then you eat the banana. What's wrong with you? Yeah, but even so. Well, come on. No. No. That, that banana was covered by condom goo, and now you're eating it? That's weird. No, but 
what I what what I did do though was I filled the cup up with water and I threw it from the second floor and it went splash into some girl's head and it was like quite funny and hilarious because she was soaking wet. But and I was like, I made you wet. Because now you have to deal Be with the slippery condom too. Like, why did you touch the condom? That's a little bit gay. Just use a water balloon, like normal people. Well, no, but like I had a used condom. Like, what am I supposed to? Do? Something else. That's just cruel. Look, I, I, I was a problem child, okay? And more than little homosexual. No. Yes. No. That, like, yes. Why, what, what, what is homosexual in what I've described? You're touching a used condom. It's disgusting. It it's, I, okay, it's like, it's like touching on. yourself. That's homosexual too. No, Arch. That is, that is allowed. I don't know about that, V. Look, Arch. Yeah, even Chad is saying, it's V, 20... it's big gay. It is. Look, Arch, I know it's 2023, but if you go to the HR lady and you're seeking a job and you're saying you're diverse because you're homosexual and the HR lady inquires further and you're like, I'm touching myself, that, that does not make you a homosexual, Arch. You're not going to get the job. V has you're not going to work at Google. I, I'm just saying. Like his it's, status it's, no. is diversity higher. You you will not get employed. It needs more than that. Ah, but this 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 show did not receive a great response. It's uh, it's been yelled at a little bit. Mm. Unsurprisingly, is it is it worse than cuties though? I, oh, God damn it, cuties. <laughs> Okay. By the way, uh, are, are you still... Yep, it's actually worse than cuties. It's zero point three points worse than. God damn. It. Okay, I'm just watching the trailer, and already I'm uncomfortable by cuties. It's like, hello, I'm a child twerking at you. Like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, Arch, I will tell you. I will tell you what we need in our lives. God, fuck the French. Arch, listen. Cuties, director's cut. But why? It would spark a conversation. A conversation. Yes. Would we like to have this conversation, though? I don't know. It would be quite profitable. And maybe some other progressive people would go to prison. So, do you know that they're investigating by Texas? Like, I, I don't know what happened to that. But I know that the Texas government started investigating into the people who made cookies. Where is the world headed, chat? Where is the world headed? To hell, as it turns out. It is a disgusting, disgusting future, and it will not end ever. This is this is forever now. This is forever. What what's what's the name of the cookies director? I don't know. Let me check. Well, I'm not gonna look it up again. I think it's a French woman. My Muna Dokore. My Muna Dokore release the, the director's cut, my Muna. Release the Maimura cut. Let's see. I can move on from the fun and engaging England uh, to see the real Holtznader saying, is Hans still a mountain of salt after yesterday? He deserves it. Like, he, uh, he, he has earned the privilege to be salty and Kip. And it is good. Kip deserves it. Real Saint also says, at Dracus, a Luthos fantastic point. And Iraqi oil money, Arch, what would Skaven Warpstone do to a 40k space marine? Imagine if a space marine was captured and experimented on in Hellpit. Well, if exposed to it for long enough, it would probably give him all sorts of interesting appendages. Mm, mm. Might even draw him crazy. Would make him a chaos space marine? Mm, but like, possibly. Something in between, I guess. Like, it would be a chaos space marine that's not bound to chaos. Only if it corrupted his mind, though. If it just corrupted his mm -hmm. body, he would still be a normal space marine, just wriggly. Yeah, and probably his chapter would not appreciate the corruption. Maybe. Possibly. That'd be interesting, though. Dracus Luthor says, What happened to Kibbles? Does he need the pencil? Yes, he does. He is uh, on Easter thing today, I know. He is uh, doing Easter things with other Easter people. 
Um, so John says season four should be the female Mandalorian, which would be about them having earning 70 credits for every 100 credits a male bounty hunter earns. That'd be good. I just, at this point, I just want them to do some bounty hunting. That's all I really want. I just want them to return basically to the monster of the week formula where they do something to somebody instead of what they're doing now. It's just every, it's pointless. Speaking of that, Arch, it's time for my contribution of uh, changing the subject to something important. Uh, did you know that there is a uproar on Twitter right now due to people not understanding why Pedro earns more money in The Last of Us than the Ramsey chick, the uh, Lady Morma, even though they're both the stars of the show? I did see that. It was trending. Let's see. I believe that the mother of the economically illiterate is always pregnant. Okay, this is a thoroughly goddamn cancerous looking website I've found here. This this looks... I can smell this website. Like, it smells of normal person, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but you will not believe, all caps of course, the pay gap between The Last of Us stars Pedro Pascal and Bell Ramsey. I I will believe it. In fact, I'm quite <laughs> happy to believe it. I understand how the world works. Yeah. Aww. You know, you know what's funny? She's making seventy grand a year, and you're supposed to take this news like your grandmother fucking died. She's making seventy yes. grand per episode. Oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, jeez. Right. So, like, you're supposed to be sad that rich people earn only seventy grand per episode. Well, like, that is part of it. Like, okay, she walked away with about, like, $700,000. Like, well, nine episodes, so slightly less. But $700,000. That's... At her age. Yeah, that, that's $700,000. Like, that's... I, that's, 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 a, that's a couple of decades of income right there. She can make her own movie now. That's, that's a lot of goddamn money. But... Ignoring that, because they're actors, you know, and they earn that kind of cash because stupid. There, there's, it's obvious why one is more known than the other. It's, it's, yes. it's retarded. It's one person has been a star in like what three successful shows now. The other appeared in like two episodes of Game of Thrones as a non-important side character. It's not even that. Like you don't know what happens on set. Uh, like how easy it is for the other actor to act or get their lines or, you know, like experience must matter. And even if she's the prodigy, like if she's the child prodigy and gets everything right, doesn't mix up a single line. And the people that are paying money, the investors, like they can't operate on the idea that, oh, we're going to land the prodigy this time. No, they're going to look at it and it's like, all right, well, we need an experienced actor and he's going to cost more. Versus, we need a child actor, which you know is going to be satisfied with seven hundred thousand. And at the end of the day, it's also the negotiating power. Like if I was a kid and I got seven hundred thousand, I would be happy, right? Especially the opportunity to act next to someone like uh, Pedro and uh, be able to launch your name out there. Does she not have eyebrows though? Mm, like, no, I noticed. Like the problem is the eyebrows. Well, she does, like, but she... her forehead is enormous. Like if if she was to to take a crayon and just make the eyebrows a little bit more bushier, it wouldn't be that distracting. She also enjoys tilting her head slightly so as to make her uh, forehead larger. Do you think it's a big brain move? No, no, I think she just looks weird. Hmm. She does, doesn't she? She does. She very much so does. Yes. But yeah, this is this is the the absolute most non-issue thing because one person is a huge star and the the other is a thing. It's 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 a thing. Like I played that chick from Bear Island in like two episodes. Oh. And the thing with the chick from Bear Island, okay, like the first time she has the conversation with Jon Snow, it makes sense, right? Like Jon Snow is coming to her. And he is begging her. So so it makes sense. So even though, like, John should know how many men she has and whatever. But then, like, when she's in that hallway and she is shaming every other grown-ass man and no one is talking back at her. That was immersion-breaking, to say the least. 
Well, she's supposed to be tough because she's from Bear Island, etc. Yeah, but like, even if she's tough, like, you think at least one person would tell her to fuck off. Hmm. It, it was literally like she had the speech next to all the other lords, and they all got up and clapped. And she was, like, shaming them. Like, she was like Greta Thunberg, going, like, how dare you? And everyone was like, oh, yeah, sure, how dare we? I mean, yeah. But, again, I don't even mind that that much. So, it's because it's for a throwaway character. But that's, again, the problem. She was a throwaway character. Yeah, she she does die, doesn't she? She she solos a giant. I don't remember. That's so. how little <laughs> she might well, no, because I, I followed her career with great interest. Did you know? Why? Because I was curious to see how the show portrays women. I, I mean, after, I, I think, like, season six, it literally became the one of the bitches. Like, on every side, there's a strong woman. In a world that, just a couple of seasons ago, made it very plain that women have it very rough. And bastards have it very rough. But then you have, like, Cersei on one camp, uh, Daenerys in another camp, Sansa in another camp, uh, Arya Stark just being her own army, just going into castles and murdering people, getting out, no problem. Uh, this lady just soloing giants and stuff. Yeah, it, it was interesting. They should have gotten the other uh, stupid little girl, the, um, the, the, the Arya one. She could have played Ellie instead. That would have been funner, because it would have been more stupid. I would have watched The Last of Us if Arya was in it. Let's see. Getting on with some of the more of the super chants. The real whole set, eh? make that? Says, how about Paper Mario? Mario loses the fight to Bowser and has to gather the seven star spitters to be strong enough to face him at the end of the day. It was Peach's faith in Mario that won the day. Paper Mario? Hmm. Why not? Uh, Mr. George Matthew, excuse me, Uncle Owns Farm. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Uncle Owns Farm. Uh... This, oh, Jesus Christ. It's just doomed, didn't it? Ah, oh, no. I lost track where I was. Oh, God. Where was I? Ah. Uh, Dracus Luthers. Abeloth reawakens and deletes the Ray Wars galaxy. I think a Abeloth is not canon anymore. Sorry. Uh, because she fought Luke Skywalker. And she was yeeted with the rest of the uh, old canon. Jits Sigma. Maybe Disney Wars learned a lesson and they make an actual good movie? No, I don't believe it either. I would be very surprised if Disney somehow learned the lesson right now. Especially as right now they need money kind of fast. Because they need to cap uh, capitulate uh, on their uh, beef with DeSantis. They need they need some, some money in their chests. Their war chest is growing thin. Didn't the CEO just double down on wokeness recently? Yes, they did in the Disney earnings call. Yes. Where he said that they were going to continue to take, uh, you know, important political stances for good and not for evil, etc. <laughs> Sorry about that. How can our children be progressive without the help of Disney? How will they? Mm. I also do love the, um, the, 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 the differences in opinion here. So... On the one hand, you've got CNN, of course. It's like, how Disney maneuvered to save Florida. Like, really? Like, there's so many people now on the left, quote-unquote, who are like, wow, Disney's the, the hero fighting against government oppression. Like, you know you're on the side of the billion-dollar multinational super corporation now. I mean... I remember uh, when the pandemic started, there was an article in The Guardian complaining, like, how will uh, races interact with each other in the context of Great Britain if they don't have to go to the corporate environment where the HR lady lectures them about interacting with each other? How will they indeed? There was literally an article. Like, they're basically considering the corporate environment like the church, where you get your morality from. And, like, how can people be decent and moral without the church? But they might not have access to the church anymore, as uh, like we talked about last week, uh, DeSantis is now considering uh, various taxes on specific highways and hotels in a very specific really? district. Imagine that. <laughs> Jesus. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I, you know, the reason that I find this funny is that it's not purely out of spite. Like, there's no economic reason or anything. It's like, oh, fuck me? No, fuck you. Like, like that scene, you know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like, no, fuck you. Well, it's also because there's a lot of prestige in this. Like, he needs to beat Disney. And the thing is, Disney is just an evil villain. Like, simple ass. Like, no matter what Ron DeSantis does to Disney, only the craziest of ideologues will come to Disney's defense, and will it will make them look ridiculous when they do. Like, can you imagine Vorsch being like, yeah, no, Disney's a really good company. You had Democrats, like, screaming, like, literally screaming when they were passing that bill to strip Disney of their privileges. Yeah, and it's great, because people look at that and go like, hold on. Disney's like an abusive as hell massive corporation. Why should you why should you be defending them? Yeah, it's like a billion dollar entity. Like to have left is that like, oh my little guy, oh my minority. No, not the billion dollar corporation owned by white people. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. This no, is it's, bad, right? it's a good what, fight. What, for go, go back, go back, go back a little bit to Pluto. Go back. The Pluto? Yeah. Pluto? Yeah, it wasn't the CNN thingy. The dog. It's it's called Pluto. I don't even know where that is anymore. It was doing something weird. It could... Never mind. Just... I'm moving on. Because uh, this also does set him up in an interesting position via the... Okay, we should, we should uh, talk a little bit about this, too. The whole Trump thing. Because this, mm -hmm. uh, this is the big news as well, isn't it? That uh, Trump got charged with hush money. Hush money, the what is the what is the technical term for hush money in legalities? Bribe. Well, actually, not quite. Because the thing is, they keep saying that he's being charged for having paid hush money. Um, they're not. They're charging him for accounting errors, basically, because they're okay, alleging so that. The money that he paid, which they think they're alleging that he paid, was used to pay Stormy Daniels, uh, which would be an illegal usage of campaign finance. They're not even accusing him of having bribed the chick. They're accusing him of an accounting error. No, so from what I gather, because I actually did a lot of investigation on this, it's like 34 crimes, which is basically the same crime repeated over and over and over again. And, and it's interesting because that crime also is past the statute of limitation. But what they're claiming is that he committed that crime in order to hide a greater crime, which they're not telling what it is. Yes, because um, there was literally a, uh, when the DA said like, okay, so what's he being charged for? And he's like, uh, well, the law doesn't require me to tell you that. Uh -huh. Yes. And they're also slowballing this thing like mad. The next deposition is December 4th. Hmm. Exactly in front of the uh, Republican elections, right? Wow, how very weird. Hmm. What a what a coincidence. But yeah, no, he is mm -hmm. um, he is up on the 34 charges. That does not mean 34 crimes. That means that it's the same ch crime he's being charged for, which is essentially campaign finance abuse, but they claim 34 different instances that they are now going to need to actually try and, you know, prove. Yeah, but uh, uh, from from what I gather mentioned. Biden's Go, go on, on, go on. Now you first. All right, uh, Biden's Biden's own advisors are basically saying that they hope that the swing voter is not going to want to vote for Trump after this. Like uh, that, they, they flat out say that the January sixth investigation, as well as the um, current one, uh, they're basically stating that no one that voted for tr uh, Trump in two thousand sixteen and then moved away from him is going to come back. Yeah, no, this is absolutely a uh, politically motivated prosecution, no doubt about it. As you can tell by the fact that there is no speedy justice here. Like, again, the next deposition is in more than six months. Like, it's, it's what, is it eight? Eight or nine months? Like, it's forever. Yes. And there's also, as you mentioned, the statute of limitation on this is over. Like, technically speaking... They can't charge him for a crime because in New York, where this is taking place, you need to charge nonviolent crimes within five years. And he did this, allegedly, in 2016. Yes, but they're saying that it's not the crimes that they're charging. 
with. It's um, the fact that he used them to hide the more serious crime. So if the other crime is uh, not past statute of limitation, then, well. Yes, and it's also the fact that the, the, the reason why, because the weird thing about this is that this court case should not have been able to proceed to this point. Because the first thing that the district attorney should have needed to do was prove to a court that they had the um, the the authority to prosecute him at all. Because they need to be like, okay, well, these charges are outdated. W well, how are you going to go after him over this? That was the first step. They need to explain why. But that hasn't happened at all. In fact, they've skipped over that entirely, and they've moved on right on to actually trying to get him convicted for the crimes. Skipping whether or not the accusations are even valid anymore, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be just a media circus. Um, but, of course, um, it's going to motivate his fan base. Like, I know people who wouldn't vote in the upcoming elections, but uh, this got them to vote. There's also the fact that the guy who is doing this, the district attorney, literally ran on a platform of going after Trump. And also, and this is one of the more minute things, but the uh, the judge overseeing the case is a Democrat and Biden uh, donator. Hmm. Now, the I amount mean... donated is tiny, mind you. It's like $35 or something, so it doesn't seem like a big deal, but surely you would not appoint a judge with any sort of ties to any sort of political party to oversee the trial of the opposing party's president. Yeah, but they're trying to portray this as not being political. Like, this is what the left does officially, but unofficially everyone knows it's political. Yes. Like, they're trying to say, oh, well, uh, you know, this is, uh, no one is above the law, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but in reality, there is no way you can look at this without just thinking that it's political. No, there there really isn't. Because in all due likelihood, it is political. Quite directly yeah. political. Oh, uh, yes. And again, it's the way they're slowballing it, too. That, for me, is the biggest indication. Because if, again, th these charges are already past the statute of limitation. If they wanted to actually get a conviction, they would be trying to get this shit through. Like, they are not only on the clock. The clock went out years ago. They need to get a move on here. And yet, again, they have apparently... An ocean of time, all the all the time in the world. Yes. How very strange. A very strange indeed. Well, you know, they can just get away with it. So if you can get away with it, then then why, why not? not do it? Exactly. Yeah. If nobody's gonna catch you for it, I don't know. Might as well. Might as well. But yeah, I do believe it is undoubtedly politically motivated. I can't see how it isn't in the way they are doing it. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows, right? Like, even Biden's advisors are talking about it. Even um, the media is talking about it. There, there's no way you can interpret this in any other way. And, and, you know, like, people also have, like, Trump investigation fatigue. Like, how many times was he investigated up until now? They they keep saying, oh, well, the first ever president charged with a crime. And I'm like, well, the, the first ever president that has been investigated and found innocent so many times. The first ever president who has been charged with uh, like six or seven crimes and investigated for them. Yeah, the most innocent found president. Well, you know, they gotta do something to keep the legal bureau occupied, I guess. Continuing on with some of the super chats. So John says, the Star Wars law states that without training, you can't use force powers. That's why the Disney trilogy isn't canon, because Rey used Forbes powers without training. Uh, including random stable boys, too, at the end of the, the second movie. Everyone uses Force powers in the Disney universe. It's kind of normal. Is it, though? Because, like, I, I'm pretty sure in, in the Old Republic, like, um, there were people that used Force powers without training. I don't think you can use them well. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a... 
Psyker from 40k, but uh, like, where are they like the witches or whatever they're called? Uh, I mean, Disney made the lore, I think. So like, there was a planet where you have the witches and they don't use lightsabers or anything, but they do use the force. They do have training though, just not Jedi training. Yeah. I don't know no. if that would qualify. I mean, Anakin used to have like some force powers when he was race driving. Well, sort of, but that wasn't like force powers. Wasn't that more like being my being guided by the midichlorians or some such nonsense? The midichlorians, yes. Because I do believe the Jedi are able to have like supernatural reflexes and stuff as just like a a normal thing without needing to concentrate on it. Shall I say? Yeah. Have you ever done that thing when you've just reached out your hands and be like, maybe I can do magic? Of course. Of course. Everybody does that. Yeah. It's normal. You do that. Every now and then, you need to do it. Like, can I pick up something with my mind? No? Hmm. Well, no, I used to do it. I don't do it anymore. I did it recently, a few months ago. Just, like, toilet paper. I'm like, wow, toilet paper's all the way over there. Can I be bothered? I'm like, let's see. Nope, I'm gonna have to walk. Did, did it work? Did it work? No. No, if it did, uh, I'd probably upload YouTube videos of that by now. Well, with you, like, what if it only works when you're on the shitter? Well, uh, that in and of itself would be a very specific phenomenon that would probably get me some money. No, because you wouldn't be able to upload it on social media because you'd be violating some terms of service. I don't know about that. I don't think there's any explicit terms of social media that says that you cannot be on the toilet. No, but you have to be naked on the toilet. Like, you have to be num doing number two, and only then it works. V. You know you can, like, pull up your boxer shorts, they, like, cover, like, most of it, you know? You no, if you, do that, if you do that, the magic doesn't work. Is, is that how it works? Is that a violation yeah, of yeah, your yeah. terms of service? No, that that's the, the lore we created for this scenario. I imagine now the idea of, okay, V's sitting on the shitter, doing his thing, wifey walks yes. in, and he's just buck naked and at first you protest like please could you not and he's like no this is how it must be done no like do you, the wife comes in here do you and you're like get like out everything no 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 look, listen listen right the wife comes in you're like get out and as you push your hand the door just slams shut and you're you know both you and her are taken aback and then you realize that as you're taking the sheet you can manipulate objects you got telekinesis and stuff right but then when you try to replicate that while you get off the toilet, it doesn't work. Hmm. So only in the moment of pinching Only Lewis in the, the moment, yes, yes. But, and, and then, you know, like, like as people investigate, like they're trying to, to find military applications for this. And, and they realize that while, while it is effective, because like, let's say you can lift up like five tons with your mind, but it only works when you're on the shitter. So, like, imagine what, what it would do to the current universe if that actually existed. Could use it as some form of propulsion mechanism, perhaps. Yeah, but, like, it, it, it doesn't last long, because you, you, gotta, you gotta be in the moment. Depends on the rules, though, because if it's, like, it must be in the moment when you pinch off the log and in between it hitting the water, you could just build, like, a really tall toilet. Um, I think it would be more with your body, like, like it's when the bowel movement from the rectum. Oh, that's starts, your theory. You know, when you have like the my you theory have the is that the toilet has superpowers. But even then, like, so so let me imagine your universe, right? Like you, you got I don't know some something very difficult to lift, right? And you have like this massive toilet, like a crane, and like the person just climbs the ladder to go all the way on top of the toilet. And, and, and like he, he does his jutsu, he, do, he does his like force pull. But but like what if what if Arch, what what if the pickle doesn't fall straight down and it actually just gets stuck on the wall of the toilet and that causes the magic to interrupt and all of a sudden like all that delicate material that you're supposed to lift just crumbles down and gets destroyed. Well, V, we call that a learning experience, and then we widen the toilet for next time. Like, at which point do you widen it too much that it doesn't look like a toilet? Well, that depends on if the magic is uh, interested in it being a toilet. And if you must maintain the shape, you just make a larger toilet overall, maintain the proportions. And then you find out that it's actually like in 40k, it's just because people believe in that, that it works. 
Like it, does, like it wouldn't have to be a toilet, but like because everyone believes that it needs to be. Well, that would make it much easier, wouldn't it? Anywho. <laughs> Ob Duello says, Ray is KK self-insert. Nothing will happen to her. You're probably right. Uh, Mark Chamber, I'd figured out greedy warp storms. Next IP. Warhammer Universe. Galaxy is split. Big E whisks tear away. There's an orc galaxy, a machine galaxy. Elder now uses a solar system to travel between them. That would be the, uh, the Age of Sigmar treatment. Yes. And why not? Why would they not do this? Uh, Mark Ashamed says, Corn Galaxy, Slanesh Galaxy, Nurgle Galaxy, Zinj Galaxy, Tau Galaxy, Nissan Eat Whole Galaxy, Nissan, the car. Dark Eldar use black holes. I don't know if Nissans can eat people. I never, I haven't seen a Nissan eat people before, but then again, they do look mildly like predatory. Mr. George Matthew says they should just go all in. The movie should just show Uncle Ben's demolished and a church to Ray put in its place. There can be a mural inside of Ray striking down Luke, the false Luke Skywalker, and dooming him to sci-fi hell. Well, so still long still as you just do a resistance, then. Still, I still don't get why they do it. Like, what, what? Oh my god, I'm doubling now. Because... They need Luke to not be Luke, because Luke was a problem. Luke got in the way and had to be eliminated. This is okay. This is fine. This is how the world was supposed to be. So petty. Yes. You know what's interesting? Like, I, I look at the movies that women like. They got Thor, right? Like, blonde hair, muscular man, a little bit dumb so that women can say, I can fix him. And that's what women like to see, you know, Christian Grey, Twilight. Why would they think, oh, if we put that ugly woman, then women would want to see it? Because they, they think ugly women are attractive to men now. Maybe in California, yeah. Let's see. I mean, okay. The, the horror show that comes from the Diablo character creator. Like, Perfect. Do you think those women would, would manage to get a date on Tinder? Ray, the cardboard box that walks. Uh, Mr. George Matthew says, you. Uncle Owen's farm. Duh. Uh, Andrew Schmidt, bricks for the bridge god. Arch, what's the price for you to put up your all RPs back up? That'll have to be after the Biden administration clears up. Hmm. What maybe, did that uh, maybe we'll have a uh, Sargon D&D by then too. Who knows? Uh, so John says, everyone behind that show should be introduced to the spicy knot. I feel like that would be animal abuse. Like, come here, Fido. I'm going to pour jalapeno on your penis. Like, no. That'd be I'm cruel. Concerned. Why would you do that? I'm concerned. Darkwell45 says, the point of the banana is to avoid the parents suing the school on indecency charges. Not sure if V is trolling or not. V. No. Tar. God fucking damn it. I'm saying you don't need the banana, period. Like, there, there needs to be nothing. Just talk to them like an adult. You take the cards and you put adults. it in the people. They're stupid children. Yes, but you can still talk to a child like an adult. And you tell them, it's like, look, all right, like, you, you take it and you put it like this. And you don't, you don't have to show it. Like, you know, you don't, you don't have to show how to put pants on for people to figure it out. It's just like, oh, God. You have far more faith in young people than I do. I mastered turning a computer on when I was nine. And I knew how to turn it off without hitting the power button. I'm pretty sure like, if I do that, I could have figured out how to put a condom. I don't know about that. Like, what if you were in a situation where you were under a tremendous amount of pressure to put the condom on? If you had to put, you had to put the condom on or something exploded. And then there's two people in the room. Like, yeah, if but... you're putting a condom, there's another person, like, I'm sure you can brainstorm Not it. Not necessarily. Like, you might just be like, I'm just going to put a condom on now because I like the feel of it or something. See, I wish you could invite people from the chat so that we can ask them how their first experience was. And I'm curious, like, how many would have said, oh, well, if I didn't learn this in school, I would have never figured it out. 
But how many of them would also be like, oh no, I was very drunk at the time, so I forgot. And that indicates that we need the styrofoam penis to remind people, because once you've seen styrofoam penis, you can never unsee styrofoam penis. I don't even know what the fuck a styrofoam penis is, but... Well, it's a penis made of styrofoam. Hmm. Not a difficult concept, frankly. Is it like a lightsaber? Speaking of uh, styrofoam penises, uh, EA will refuse American McGee to make uh, another Alice game, so we will not be getting any other Alice games ever again. That is unfortunate, because I really like the, uh, the Alice game, the one that were horrifying. Yes, they were pretty cute. I, I love that kind of universe where you take something cute and fluffy and you make it awful. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They weren't terrible games either. A bit clunky, but, you know, such is life. Yeah. A true tragedy. Plus, like, it was just such a disturbing goddamn world. And it kind of makes sense, considering that the original Alice in Wonderland was written by a person who wanted to get into a uh, little girl's pants. Nani? Oh, he didn't know this? No. Oh, the uh, the writer of Alice was a pedophile, and this was essentially a uh, love poem, quote unquote, that he made to a very young girl. I'm disturbed. Where uh, she had to go down the rabbit hole. Jesus fucking Christ! The rabbit hole. Giganiga says condoms. Why? Best protection. Emperor protects. True. If, if like you uh, pray... if in forty k, like like if a man has sex with a woman and he prays to the emperor for protection, do you think he he may not have a child? I'm sure it 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 probably works in real life too. If you ask Jesus to not impregnate people, then they won't become pregnant. So you think like Jesus manually takes part in the impregnation? Jesus always takes part. V. Don't you remember? Isn't there somebody you haven't asked? Like, V? Somebody hmm. else? Jesus? Hmm. I don't consent. Hmm. Well, usually it's about uh, asking the progressives. Jesus is always yeah. there, watching. That is disturbing, but you're right. I mean, it's, it is according to Christian doctrine. It's not just Jesus. It's the Father and the Holy Spirit. They're all watching. Yep. Every yeah. sexual intercourse is a gangbang. So John says the director of Cuties is Juden. Oh heavens! No, no, it's it's a black woman from France. No, but they can be Juden too. Can they? I mean, I don't yeah. think they can be Ashkenazi. Um, oh, maybe, but yeah, maybe religiously. Ugh. Andrew Jackson says the teacher forgot the com when she told the class the girls in the class pulled them out and one of them gave a detailed description and showed the other girls how to use their mouth. Nani? Well, that would certainly be a, a funny instance if nothing else. Student-led sex education. Hmm. I feel like that would be sexual harassment on more than one level, but it's an interesting idea. TBA 113 says, We soon won't need Eldar to create Slanesh. We have already created Slanesh. He's with us now. Andrew Jackson says, chat... This was in year eight. I don't know what that's referenced to. Someone in the chat said about our Jesus talk, Imagine what a progressive things these streams are about versus what they actually are. We need to read Super Chats faster because I forget about the context of these things because we start talking about magic poop toilets. Yeah, my bad. Magic poop. Did Kibbs talk about magic poop toilets? No. He did talk about shoving penises up his pee hole, although. Yeah, 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 the sounding thing I saw. Ob it was very popular, though. It was. Obduello says, Pedro is no longer on set. He simply does voice acting. Yeah, see? See? A pretty comfortable job, though. Getting paid thousands to do some voice acting occasionally. Yeah, and you don't even have to lip sync. They slap on some filters to make it sound like helmeted and distorted. Uh, Mark Chafer says, Can't believe I caught you live for the first time. I love your stuff, Arch. And V, by the way, get working on that Sabbath World's Crusade series. I will. I'll probably pop up uh, Winter Times again when the ad revenue goes back up again. 
Mark Shame says, start shorting Disney stonks. <sighs> ah, the stonks movement. It worked once, but it, it's it's never worked again, and it never worked before. It was an investment miracle, and it will probably never be well, repeated. Well, it's also due to the fact that um, they, they short sell like no tomorrow. Yes. Poor, poor Disney. Maybe one day they could go back. Oh, God. Ugh. I just remembered. Yawn. Sorry. Their next, like, big movie thing is the goddamn Disney is the Mermaid. Have you have you seen some of the promotional uh, pictures of her? Yes. And I, I also noticed that they changed the song um, because they were afraid that people will think the prince is trying to rape her during the, the first kiss. Like, they, they were afraid that... Right, so so when you when you watch that sha la 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 kiss the girl type of thing, right? In your mind, Arch, you were thinking that the prince is going to jump her, right? Yes, no, I figured like, Ray you, was you were thinking. <laughs> yes, like it was imminent. Luckily, the two eels managed to flip the boat over. So, but they're now changing it to sha la 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 kiss the girl. You know that maybe she wants to. <sighs> well. That was always the problem I had with uh, Little Mermaid. Not enough, you know, sensitivity in the uh, title. But, okay. So, look at look at this. Look at this here, Chet. This picture in particular is just awful. Like, she looks terrible. Like, she looks like her face has been artificially widened. Like, her nose is enormous. And, like, she's got some weird, like, gills on her forehead or something. She looks Terrible. Arch. Sha la 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 kiss the girl. You know you want to dance. She might want to. You should try. La 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 la. <laughs> if she screams, try harder. Remember, oh no harm, God. no she foul. Look, look, look at the, the size difference. She looks like a fucking child compared to him. Well, of course. I would be afraid to touch her. I would, I would literally be afraid because like the FBI would come from under the water in Navy SEAL uniforms. Holy shit. Because the man still needs to be massive with a chiseled jaw and perfect hair and massive hands. Like, ah, little woman, crush your skull. <laughs> like, you can pick it up with one hand. Like, oh my god. This is no. The, the, no, like, usually there needs Diverse to be chemistry kingdom. between them. Good. Look at her. Oh, she. Oh. This King Atlantis looks okay, I guess. And uh, the octopus woman is just going to be a drag queen. Good, good. She literally needs to pick her up, Arch, so she can kiss her. Like, the, the, the kiss will happen with her getting up on a ladder. Like, they will have a tiny ladder for the kiss to actually take place. Those are some awful water effects, too. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, the, the, the black aristocracy of Europe that we all know and love. Yes. Because we don't need to... Uh... Line, like, like, this is something that I didn't understand, right? Like, when they casted Black Ariel, I thought that uh, Triton or Neptune or whatever the fuck is going to be black as well, because it makes sense, right? But apparently, no. No, it was just a little bit of race mixing. Which is evil, by the way, according to Wizards of the Coast. I don't, I don't think it's race mixing, because like, she looks like... Not, not, not that. I, I, I think maybe she's adopted. Maybe. They just found her somewhere, and she was black, and they were like, well, that's weird. Like, like Neptune's uh, wife went like, so So I watched this movie with, with like, a black guy. <laughs> we decided to bring the black baby home, because, you know, the fish were bullying her or something. Yeah. But we don't need to invent flops. We don't need to be like, the Mario movie is going to be awful, or Way of Water is going to be awful. We can just look at this. We can just look at this instead. Uh, Mark James says, uh, no, sir, sir, sir John says, the Nazis would use the same thing to gain control of corporations so they could nationalize the company and take their money. Good. Good. We need to walk more closely in the Nazis' footstep. Only that way can we reach true paradise, according to Wizard of the Ghost. Race mixing evil. Mark James says, worst case, 2024 Trump gets Epstein, recount... Says Brandon won with over 90 million recount. All those that voted Trump are now felons. And he also says political See? criminals are more dangerous than violent criminals. A politician, 2023. I don't think that um, 
they're against the idea of race mixing. They're against the idea of calling it half race, right? They, they find the, the, like calling someone half Asian is offensive. Uh huh. But if a child is the child of a white dude and an Asian, what is it if not half Asian? Half white? Mixed race, actually. Mixed race. Mixed race is definitely a, a no no word, though. Is it? Yeah. Where did you get that? No, I think mixed race is too work. No, no, no. You're not allowed to be mixed race. You gotta be one race. Like, nobody's mixed race. Like, oh, what are you? Oh, well, I'm mixed race. Like, let me break down my genome. We're all mixed race, V. There's Mongolian in you. But it's like the one drop rule, I think. Like, what, what, what rule do the progressives go? Well, listen, we're all mixed. Like, Kibbs is Irish, for example. Is he? Yep, okay. Irish. Does you he celebrate the, the thing? There's probably some Hungarian inside of you too. Is the worst of the worst. No, I think it's Moldavian. I'm German. Okay, I got some. Jesus fucking Christ. I am basically a pure breed. However, like my genealogy is like ninety eight percent white. No, I've seen your your war games. I think you're German. No, there's yeah, not yeah, a there's not a whole lot of Germans. Like my family can trace our lineage back like three hundred years. At which point it gets really sketchy. We used to live near one place that was called Hell, which was funny. So, if anything, I might have something ancestry from there. Hmm. But I am very white. I am, I am almost the whitest person you can be. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you kind of look the part, but like, are you saying that Germans aren't white? Yes. Hmm. There's way too much Hungarian and Austrian and French and Swiss and Italian ugh, in that mix. Italian? Oh, yeah. The Holy the Roman Empire uh, was invading yeah, Italy that, for a that while. Is, that is true. That is true. Lucian says, lost interest in Star Wars when I first discovered Warhammer as a teen. That is the correct choice. And Mark James says, anglerfish theory on sex appeal. What is that? The larger, larger jaw, the better? You know, if you want, I have a guy that's really, really into Star Wars, and he wants to fight you on the issue. On the issue. Because you say that the lore isn't accurate, and he wants to defend it. No, it isn't accurate. Well, like, he claims it is, and, and he's going to, like, give explanations for why things aren't the way they are. Yeah, but he can't. Mm. Like, the thing is, Star Wars lore is a uh, bullshit reason, therefore... Which is, which is fine to a degree. But, like, the lightsaber is bullshit reason because. Like, why does light work like that? Why does light cut through solid metal? Because. Because it goes through a living crystal arch. Uh-huh. And how does that work? It uses the force. Uh-huh. And how does that work? You need to ask a Jedi. Like, why, why would it have oh, to We be? have already it arrived like... at because... Lightsaber works because. Hmm. I say it shouldn't work. I say it should just be like solid plasma or something and it should burn the fuck out of the Jedi's hand every now and then. Uh, Seto says, do they actually expect us to watch these movies? I don't know if they do. I expect the investor. They, I expect they think that the investors will give them enough money to make the movies and then they'll have a tax write-off. Uh, I, mean, I, Otto, I heard Ray is heard that plain, is... so women can self-insert. Yeah, but like, why would a woman want that though? Like, well, what is in the Star Wars universe that a woman would want? Well, that's the thing, and also I do not believe that women wish to be plain. It's... But no, it's not. It's not even that. Like from my experience, right? And and I don't know if the women in America are the same. Most women don't like violence. I don't know about that. So, like, women women do not want to see, like, hands flying off and, and heads being beheaded and shit? Like, uh, at least not them doing it? I don't know. Because, like, I, when I was... I quote Titus yeah, Pullo on this. You know, you, you need to get a woman wet and ready, you need to present her with the heart of a slain enemy. When I was uh, a young lad, and this is my generation, right? And I would uh, have a girlfriend, and I would try to convince her, like, let's watch some movies. Like, oh, no, this is too violent. Oh, no, I don't like this. It's too much violence. Like, they, they didn't like violence, right? So I'm thinking, like, Star Wars. Uh, what exactly is there? Like, do, do they like Kylo Ren? I mean, maybe, I guess. But, like, why would you like Finn? There, there's nothing there. Like, he doesn't have a character. 
Why, why would you like the, the pilot dude? Also, same stuff, you know? It's like... In order for a woman to self-insert, she needs to have, like, uh, a Captain Riker, a, a Picard, like, something. A Picard, hmm. Yes. And even then, right? This depends on whether or not they are actually attractive, or if Disney is just telling us, like, oh, this is this is totally what attractiveness is. Like, have we asked the women? Do do you do you want Kylo Ren? Do you desire Kylo Ren? No, no, maybe they say no. It's like, no, I would like more violence. I think so. I think women are inherently violent uh, creatures. I mean, th there is like an aspect of violence that women like. So, for example, um, ah, yes. what is it called? How many uh, copies of, of Shades of Grey, of Grey were sold? Excellent point, chat. Like, Rido of Healer. The, uh, the, the, the guy making it came out and said that women are a huge part of his fan base. And, th and that does have violence in it, right? But it's a different type of violence. Women write some of the most disturbing, over-the-top, fetishy nonsense you've ever seen. Like, you want to see somebody do a rape? Well, hmm, look for a female author. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I believe that uh, Demon Slayer is wrote by a woman. I said, I don't think so. Well, I cannot, the manga creator, is she not? Uh, I remember Anita Sarkeesian wrote some very disturbing fanfic to herself to, to show. Uh, I can't tell like, the like, Japanese you names. You remember the quote unquote threat that Anita Sarkeesian got on Twitter, which she screenshotted two seconds after being sent, and it was like some guy wanting to drink blood from her genital? Yes, after she and, wrote and it. I was, and I was like, you know, that, that does take some really sick, disturbing mind in order to come up with something like that. It's like Why? most people on the internet just call you a slur and call it a day. It's... <laughs> Why does Wikipedia not list the pronouns of the thing? No, no, this is a dude. Yeah, no, the creator of Demon Slayer is a dude. Effeminate dude, but dude. Ashamed of yourself, V. You are. Uh, says, so Arch and V, with Sargon wanting to review, revive the D&D campaign, how are you going to get your characters to work together to finish the mine? I don't want to finish the mine. I still not remember. Not playing that shit. The fucking thing. Not playing that shit. Like, we'll be on the island for just like one or two sessions. And then he's like, oh, by the way, there's orcs on the island now. And there's entire no, nests but not of only that. Like, like, not only that, that wasn't the problem, right? We asked him. It's like, do you do, do we have to manually do everything, or can we just make some rolls? And he's like, just make some rolls. And then he actually makes you roll for every single piece of, pe of fence that you're placing down. He did. Every section of the wall. And every section of the wall, yeah. Uh, and then makes us miss the crusade. And then, when we built the walls, the wall was assaulted by alligators. Like, literally, all he had to do was to save the prince, or the guy that, you know, you work for was like, okay, well, um, we're going to put someone else in charge of the mine because we have to go to the crusade and it's a big responsibility, so we can't just, you know, like literally that. And not to mention, like, giving players access to a silver mine, such a dumb idea, because, like, now you, you take money out of the equation. Like, with a silver mine, you have an endless supply of income. Like, you, you do not need to worry about gold. It's like just removing it. Which is something he did in Cyberpunk as well, when he, they, they let you rob a bank. Like, that is, that is the fun aspect in, in grinding for gold, and then you, when you finally buy the stuff, it feels good, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's, the, it's the process of getting the money in a decent way, and also leveling up stuff, and getting things and things and things. 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 We will see. We will see. Uh, Zero says, Arch Rogue tra Trader Navigator Bay. Nani? That sounds cool. The Navigator from Rogue Trader, I'm presuming. The uh, RPG made by Owlcat, the people who made Pathfinder. She is one of oh, the yeah, few yeah, attractive the characters in that one. She and the Volter Bitch. I Hmm. The, see, Pathfinder Wrath of Exile, I think it was an amazing game. It was pretty good. 
It was pretty good. You had the the succubus, which was an amazing character. You had like the the goblin. He was an amazing character too. You had the 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 little girl. Um, what was her name? The elvish chick, right? Like, which was pretty much like Jesus Christ. Um, like it had so. Oh, and the chaotic evil elf. Like almost every character was actually interesting. Yep, they had like, very good. I I haven't. Yeah, I haven't played a role playing game like that since forever. And even the villains, like, um, which, like, you, you start to wonder, are they really villains? Uh, the uh, the succubus queen, right? Like, she was supposed to be evil, but, like, actually you can redeem her? Sort of. No, you, you can make her into the redeemer queen goddess, I think. Like, you, you allow the Jesus elf to talk with her. And basically, like, she has hope that she can be better, and she actually does get better by the end. The rogue trader one but was anyway, looking... Like... Uh... Pretty cool too, but you can already you can already begin to see the modern day design sneaking in a little bit. So we've got um, butch tomboy black girl woman thing man androgynous. You have uh, navigator. She's okay looking. That's not too bad. Uh, Elf looks just kind of weird and gaunt. Bolterbridge looks good, but apparently she's not romanceable. And then this woman who just also like her face looks weird. Meanwhile, the men, all brutish, stern, brooding, chiseled chins, massive upper bodies. Oh. Ah, I, I mean, hate Pathfinder, you also... So, so a lot of people didn't play Pathfinder Wrath of the Exile because of the lesbians in the beginning, because they, they saw the lesbians and oh, this is a woke game. But the lesbians were actually quite hot and pretty. Like, you had the orc lady, which was, like, the captain of the guard, and they had, like, an interesting story dynamic going on, and they, they had lore. I mean, they, they weren't just, you know, check boxes. Um... Uh, so, so a lot of people missed out on the game. Like, honestly, go play Pathfinder: Wrath of the Exile. It's a great game. Righteous. Yes. It is a pretty good game. Yeah. It's balanced, like Olcat usually does. It's infuriating. You need to meta game it like fucking mad if you want to play on anything but goddamn easy. <sighs> and I do hate that. Yeah, like one of one of the bad things is that because you fight so many demons, spellcasters are kind of useless because demons have like ma uh, magic resistance. Yes. So. um you're going to have a very hard time playing a spellcaster. One of the big problems with uh, all of the Owlcat games is that they expect you to meta game. And uh, the game is... If you try to do like a roleplay bill, like, I'm gonna play like a shaman that calls the lightning. No, you're gonna get boned. Yeah. Uh, 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 War Fight says, My sister says that... Is lies and slander of Lewis Carroll so made up? Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll? Lewis Carroll. See, now I've missed the context again. Uh, writer and poet, apparently. Uh, something, something. Uh, War Bastard says, What reading material would you recommend to someone new to 40k? Cypher's game. Always. Start with Cyphers came, then move on to Gaunt's Ghost and uh, the Inquisitor series. Uh, JD, I believe half breed is the PC term. Try it out. A half breed. I could do that. Could be half, breed. half breed. You're a half breed. Mongrel. Mongrel. Personally, I am partial to mulat because it just sounds mean. Or mulatto is the more correct English pronunciation. Like, you're a mulatto. That hurts. It does. Uh, Lazier Soda says, Bit the bullet and bought Warhammer 3 on sale about two weeks ago. At least you got on a sale. We'll kill the new Dawizar with Skaven just for you. Thanks for the lord and cast. You're very welcome, sir. So John says, If you want female degeneracy, Google Dulcet Girls. I dated one. Still mentally scarred from it. Dulcet Girls. Well, after... Duck, duck, go. Who is that? A is that a? Are you using duck, duck, go? I use Bing. It's a lot faster now. That's a that's a that's a guillotine. That's okay. Okay, this is something. Ooh, oh yeah, no, I don't think we are. Uh, oh Jesus, yeah, I don't think we're gonna show this on stream. Hmm, heavens. Okay, well, some people have fetishes. <laughs> some fetishes are weird than others. Mark Shame says, so many RPG playthroughs go and finish without an ending. Just kill the party off, please. Maybe, maybe that would be better at the end. 
kill them all. The general senator, I still can't believe he wouldn't let you micro it and then punish you for microing it. Also, you wanted you kill, to kill a hundred crocodiles, lol. It was and, too and much. And the crocodile just assaulting people, it's yep. not just Not just people. Like, people would be one thing. They were assaulting the walls. Yes. Like, I don't think crocodiles <laughs> do that. I don't think crocodile sees a fortress and goes like, hmm, besiege them now. No, but like even even then, like crocodiles understand that if it's like five or six people, they they're not going to attack because it'll be hurt. They're not suicidal. Yeah, they're not suicidal. It's... <laughs> uh, Real Holsnader also says, "Sorry, I meant to say punished for not microing." Also, V, I think the silver mine would have been good because you could have used the money to raise men archer status. Just make good equipment rare. Well, good equipment as well. See, that was, that's one of the problems with new d d It's like, I got the rapier I wanted, like, on the first session, pretty much. And after that, mm -hmm. I have no weapon upgrades ever. The only weapon upgrade I have is a rapier plus one. Like, fuck, that's boring. It's like, yeah. what's this rapier? I... Well, it gives one to hit. Oh. You can make cool equipment, though. You can make a talking sword. Um, you can make, like, a, a weapon that gives you, like, an ability to cast fireball or some shit. Uh, like, at least in my game, which for some reason Sargon didn't like because I was mixing modern technology with uh, the ancient stuff. Um, like, for example, you would have a rocket launcher that functioned like a fireball. So literally the same stats for a fireball wand, but it's a rocket launcher. Like you, you can try to make something like that because otherwise the the D and D system is boring as fuck. Just need to do a little bit more with the weapons. Like give them some abilities where you can use in battle. Uh, Rashmi Otaru says, "Women don't like an MC more attractive than themselves." That's why Kristen Stewart was in Twilight. Kylo was pretty popular. Raylos harassed the actors. Raylos. That sounds crazy. Wait, wh what? Like, Raylo harassed the actor? I did not know that. Women don't like an actress more pre prettier than themselves. See, that that I can 1,000% get behind and see. Because <laughs> most, most women don't look at other women and want them to be better than them. Like, that's not a self-insert. Like, women don't do self-inserts in that way, I don't think. Like, for for a guy, you can self-insert Sorta onto the blank-faced anime protagonist, but I don't think women do it the same way. I don't even know, like, but dude, when I was a kid, right, like, the first anime that we had in my post-communist country, after getting, like, all the shit communist things, we had uh, Sailor Moon. There were so many kids at school that were men, and they were pretending to be Sailor, Sailor Warriors. Really? Yeah. Like it, this is so like I, I don't understand this thing. Country. Like, well, I, I can't, I can't self insert. I, I it needs to look like me. What the fuck? There you go, chat. Feminine beauty. Uh, JD says I hated the time limit on Pathfinder Kingmaker. Anathema to an RPG, in my opinion. The party choice will also be limited and unmoddable. Sad. Yeah, because okay. Let's have a little whinge about the Pathfinder games here, because they're good, but they're all really flawed in certain ways. The Pathfinder Kingmaker, the kingdom mechanic was really cool. Like, I quite like it. It was a neat idea. But the time limit? Oh yeah, an unforgivable sin. Unfucking forgivable sin. Should never have been in the game. Well, and without the, the time know. limit, you can just um, you can just be overpowered. I think that's why it is. Yeah, you're going to be overpowered like, without the time. Well, yeah, but like without the time limit, the game becomes just very simple. You just click enter and enter and enter and you just, you know, like farm everything and stuff. So I, I kind of understand why it's there. Um, I don't know. Like, what, I guess like, what does that mode give you that makes you all that overpowered? Um, no, it just makes your kingdom, like uh, your, the, the way your kingdom is at the end, it gives you a different ending. So you could just get like the best ending by just hitting enter and like, making sure that your kingdom is as best as possible. Yeah. Right, like, not? you don't have to balance things out. Because, like, in, in the normal way, you have to consider, like, which advisor you send. You have to consider, like, what, what you focus on. But but if you didn't have the time limit, you could just do everything. Yeah, but people won't play like that. Like, some people will always min-max, but they'll just mod it out anyways. Most people will still take the game seriously because they enter into the game in good faith. They wish to play the video mm. game. And, and time limit, the then just stress people out. 
Because there, there's like the min maxer and then there's the role player. Yeah, but you're, the min maxer also is just gonna like, oh, a time limit. Okay, well, look up a guide. There you go, time limit beaten. Time limit, <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> that is true. It's also the awful fucking thematic balancing in all of their campaigns. Kingmaker, you were fighting half a dozen swarm enemies half the time. So if you brought certain builds, like uh, precision builds or aggressive builds like rapiers, melee stuff, you would just get stomped. You needed AoE. Lots of it. And the character design, too. I don't know. Like, Alcat is on this, this kind of raises edge between decent design and wokest design where they've got certain characters that look pretty okay and other characters that look like like why did you make this character weird looking i don't know maybe it's just their artist i guess that just draws weird kingmaker had really really bad characters like that i i couldn't the only character that i wanted to to be with was like the barbarian woman but like she doesn't have a romance option yep which is also dumb too like fuck off it's a role-playing game i can fuck whichever person i want i mean i i get it like you don't want to write because uh, like when you're a game developer you're basically constrained by time and resources and maybe you don't want to write romance options for all the characters delay your fucking game but but it was it was so fucking obvious that people would want to fuck the barbarian woman. Yeah, because she was well, she was pretty much the only traditionally attractive one. Like necromancer yes. chick was okay, but eh. Paladin chick wasn't bad either, but she was basically a man. Well, hold on, hold on. Necromancer chick was undead. Yeah. Paladin chick was ugly as fuck. Like I, I they, nah, they kept saying in the story that it was that bad. Put her put her on the screen. Let the chat see the atrocity that she you're saying was good. That bad. Like, she is just short hair, ugly face, clad in armor that hides all of her forms. There, there is no fucking way that you would look at that and be like, oh yeah, that, that's waifu material. The, the undead chick was dead, so it doesn't count. And uh, Lindsay is like a midget. Yeah, some people like that stuff. I guess. Uh, some people want, in the to, UK, apparently. want to fuck the midget. Do, do you know that Midget porn is banned in UK? No, but I do know now. It is interesting. That, that, that's not the one, Arch. That is the one. Oh God, I'm, I'm going to look and find the... Uh, that is, that is actually the one. Pathfinder, Kingmaker... The thing is, like... Um, I think, like, the black one in Wrath of the Righteous is actually more sexy. Ah, here we go. J just so we're talking about the same person, right? Because maybe you don't know which one I'm referring to. So I'm referring to this. Uh, to... And it's the same trick. Well. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, I, I didn't... Like, there's a lag between... The like, it's, it's zoomed out a little oh, yeah, yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, now, now I can see it, now I can see it. Um, how, how can you say that's... That's, that's not that dude, bad. Arch, that like, is yeah, it, it, it is rather masculine, but it is not that bad. Arch, he will take you and buy you a beer. That is not that bad. V needs to lower his goddamn standards. I, I, I'm sorry if you look at my character and, and it's what I consider to be good, right? Like the, the one, the PNG that, that I'm using to talk with. Like, this is what I would consider to be good. What you are showing me is an abomination. These standards will be lowered. I don't care what he says. What, what, okay, what, what do you find attractive in it? Go on. Listen. She has hair. Short. Cut. Yeah. She has hair. There's even a Every hint of boob plate there. there. Arch, like, if you're that desperate that anything with the pulse works, then we they do have different standards, yes. Well, yeah, but that's the thing. Pathfinder has only, like, that and Barbarian Chick. And even Barbarian Chick is not that good. No, but, like, in the story, she was described as being very beautiful, and I was looking at her avatar, and I was like, what the fuck are these people right. smoking? When you don't have any options, you go for the least bad ones. And that is really this all. Is... Arch! It's a 50-50 chance when you take down her pants what you're going to get. No, because boot plate. Boot plate guarantees. 
boob plate is guaranteed. What boob plate? There is no boob plate. There is boob plate. There is a slight there is there is a slight bulge there. There is a slight bulge there. There is boob plate. She can do that just to to, to trip you she up. She probably has bigger boob plates than the barbarian. I mean, look, if you're comparing it to the necromancer, well, the barbarian at least like has like the tight leather, right? So like it, it squeezes the tits. You know what? I wish I could start a poll just to see what people in the chat would say. That is not boot play touch. I am sorry. Like you're stretching there. Like your your imagination is just making things out of the ether. Like you're trying to 40k this shit. You're 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 basically trying to believe until it's there, but it doesn't work that way. The problem is though that all of the characters could easily be made way more attractive. Like just just by little touches. You don't even need to change them all that much. Like um, Camilla in Wrath of the Righteous, for example. Yes. Give her a little bit of eyeshadow, for example, a little bit of makeup, mm. touch her up, shade her face slightly differently, and she'll look way better. I've seen mods that do that. Um, the same for uh, Succubus as well. Like, fix her up a little bit, and she'll look way better. Because she looks plain in that, especially for a Succubus, too. Annie? Arch, do you think that if you paint her tits red, will they grow faster? Probably. Not to mention, they're all flat, too. And again, this is a conscious choice. Like, there is no way the devs aren't doing this on purpose. Because even Arch, the uh, the people... standard uh, player portra portraits are more attractive. People in chat are saying that um, there's a bulge in her pants, Arch. That's because chat's gay. And they want the penis. Oh, I denounce my, one. my gay chat. And yes, it is because of Paizo in large parts too. That's uh, working their influence on Owlcat as well. Mm. Well, you know, you can mod it, so it's it's fine, I guess. How long do you think this shit will last, though? Forever. I mean, it's got to be a time when someone goes like, fuck it, let's just have a pretty girl in it, you know? I don't know about that. I'm just going to assume forever until a uh, change begins. Then I'll be happy again. If it begins. Uh, Mola... I've been asked, it's like, I've been asked, is there any single pretty female character in the Western game? And I, I thought really hard. Like, really, really hard, Arch. I'm struggling. Like, tell me a sexy female character in a Western AAA game that came out in the last four years. I don't care about modern AAA games the last four years. No, no, but like, like one. I don't just, care. Just not, they're, they're, well, I don't I care. I haven't don't. been paying attention to them, so I couldn't. Tell I know you, you don't. I don't but like, just, care. they don't exist. The only, the only thing that I could have think of is Lara Croft from like the the the, the remake of the the first Tomb Raider, and that is like the only single pretty female character that has come up in the last goddamn years. Well, listen. This is why your standards must change. Attractive female character now is like that rust chick from the stupid games with the dinosaur robot things. The fat one. Mm. That is where the standard lies at now. But there must be at some point another game that will come up and we will have like... I'm not saying like a female character like my avatar, God forbid, but like at least something that's serviceable. Must there? Why must there be? Why can we just not continue with this forever? Like, cause it would sell. Like, there is no way. Like, at this point, you can just have a game with a pretty we need character. Realistic beauty standards, and we will have them. Well, like realistically, women don't look like shit. <laughs> realistically, women do look like shit, but they have more paint. Oh my god, that's just—I don't know. Like, maybe in Norway or or in California, but like here in Eastern Europe, like. Even the mediocre women look better than whatever Hollywood is putting out. See, this unironically is going to be the uh, the issue. Because, okay, right now, there's the idea of unreasonable beauty standards with filters and Instagram models, and stuff, etc. Yeah, sure, because they cheat a lot. But the base level woman already cheats with makeup, right? But all this has done is it's been a, a um, an arms race, essentially, towards the perfect woman. And now AI has arrived and can generate that woman. Thousands can of generate them. Generate that woman. <laughs> Do you know, uh, I actually have... missed the game. 
Women have Overwatch. actually invalidated themselves. But think about this, right? Like the whole idea is to to show like fat women and video games and masculine chicks so that women feel more comfortable with themselves, right? But we never lived the more fake time in human history. Like you go on OnlyFans or Twitch and you see filter, you see cosmetic surgery, you see uh, makeup. Like like women uh, are doing everything possible, like positioning the camera in certain angles. Like they they have never been more faked in the entire human history than on OnlyFans and on Twitch, despite all of the propaganda that they're pushing out. Well, it is true. And that is also why the AI will become so dominant. Because I was thinking about this. Will it? Like, or will it be censored? Oh, it will be censored. But we'll see how far it goes. Because the idea of Cause realism, right? Because people object, like, oh, the AI doesn't look real. Women don't look real. What are you fucking talking about, I mean, real? But the problem with AI, because um, I've been looking into it, is not just what it draws. Uh, first of all, like, all of the things that it does, all the AIs that exist... Um, they do not give you a commercial license for using all their work, but that that's fine. The other thing that exists is that imagine on DeviantArt, right? Like you have most people that do a doodle and upload it, and that doesn't take much space. But imagine someone with an AI churning out like 4K images, like thousands of them, and then uploading them on the servers. And there's like tens of thousands of people doing the same things. Like it would crash their servers. Um, so... This is why, like, most companies are against AI work. Because it's very easy to turn out 4K images. The thing is, it, it people do use it commercially. Like, there are people who create Patreons to sell their AI-generated images. Like, people are already yeah, monetizing this. Yeah, but you, you, you is getting sued. Like, that's the point. Like, you, you can make, like, uh, YouTube thumbnails with AI, right? Sure. Probably nothing will happen to you until one day. The company goes like, yep, uh, we need to crack in on this because, you know, like maybe there's a law or maybe there's something. Um, so you're basically exposing yourself to this. But what are they going to sue you for? You're violating their TOS. They can just copyright strike you. Okay. You know, they're, well, it's not a copyright, though. No, it is whatever. Like, they, they will just ask you to take it down. Yeah, sure, but <laughs> that's literally everything. That is actually literally everything. Is it though? Yeah. Like anything can be a violation of terms of service, as we have seen, and with the terms of service ever expanding. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean this is a little bit different, um, because it would be like a company saying, Well, they're they're not allowed to do this um in a commercial way. Like you're violating their, their TOS and they, they can demand they take it down because technically they own it. Although actually no, legally they don't own it. That's the thing. AI work is not regulated. So it's kind of like that picture that um, a monkey took of a, a photograph, a selfie, and the the photographer couldn't have IP rights for it because it was done by an animal, not by a human. So in, in the case of AI, basically, like if you were to make your comic book um, and you create like an AI character, other people can use it and you can't protect that. There's nothing you can do. Like you, you, can, you do not have the rights for it. The reason too why the companies are not actually going to ban it is very, 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 very simple that the companies want to use them too. Like, Microsoft is pouring billions into this. Google's is pouring billions into this. These companies are not going to ban something they intend to use to earn money. Well, no, but like, they will probably say if you want to use their AI to generate art, you will have to pay a fee or some shit. Of course. They already do that. I don't think they allow you commercially. Like, if I want to make a video game and have that art in my video game, I do not have a single terms of service that allows me to do it. People have already made games with fully generated AI art and put them on Steam. I'm sure. But again, you're opening yourself up so that several years from now, they can be taken down. B, you're making political videos on YouTube. Yes. You're already opening yourself up. Like, yeah, but like, this is different. No, it isn't. Like, this, this, it is. Because, like, one is ideological. The other one is something that I can foresee. The other one like, is you're, economic. You're... Like, it's going to be ideological either way. Yeah, but you're, you're flat out violating their TOS. It, it's like me making a video game and going on YouTube and copying music and videos from other people and putting it into my commercially uh, used video game. Look, like, listen. technically nothing will happen, but, like, potentially, any any one of those people that, I, that I'm copying can just come in and say to Steam, no, take this game down. Um, that depends. 
because that is, there is no legal precedence on that, and we haven't determined a legal precedence on that. But, but there is legal precedence on that. Like, like if I use sounds from your voice, right? Like let's say I, I make a video game and I use sounds from your channel, and you find out about it, like you can technically just file a mail to Steam, and my game will be taken down, and that has happened in the past. Yes, but then you also have the example of Sargon winning the fair use battle over that. So it's not that simple. But like, it is different because like Sargon didn't make a video game with Akila Obvious's YouTube video. Right? Like it's. Nah, he probably would have had an easier win then. It, it's not that. Okay, you, you, we will have to discuss after no, not the to Steam. Mention, the, the... Like you, you say, violating the to 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 us. Yes, everything violates the TOS. Every video you have made have violates the TOS. Every single no, but we're one. Talking, of them. Hold on, we're, we're talking about the TOS of the company that is with the AI. Like this is similar. Yeah, there, there's there's to... dozens of AI. Like we're, there's not one AI. All of them. All of them have no. The same no. Is... Yes. I mean, yes. Jesus Christ! I there are. Into it. Yeah. I did the market oh. research. Like no, because I I'm, I was interested in seeing this. Right. So all the AI. Like we're talking about uh, what what Mid Journey, Novel AI. Uh, like all the ones that make pictures, the big ones at least, the, the ones that actually make good stuff. Let's see, like, I, I... Pictory, Jasper, Murph, uh, Hit Roll, Love I A, uh, Fireflies, Mid Spe uh, Mid Journey, Speechify, Reply, Neural Text. Yes, yeah, there are of dozens of them that allow yes. commercial use. So when I looked, it said in their TOS to all of them that you're not allowed to use them in a commercial way. You can, however, get an artist to modify them. And by the way, they have a watermark because people go like, how do you know? It's like, well, they have a watermark when when they release it. So it's like, oh, yes. um, yeah, like they, they know it's AI. Of course. But again, like there are plenty of AIs and we use for commercial use. Well, look, if you want to invest like 30 grand into making a game and use AR to do it, like be my guest. But don't be pick at your face when bad things will happen down the line. Oh, sure, but your argument is that you can't do it because it's a violation of their terms of service. But no, my argument is that if you do it, you expose yourself to have your game taken down from Steam. But why? Because the company can just request it. Which company? All right, it's kind of like me going to Kibbs and asking him for art, and then putting that art in my video game. At any point, Kibbs can just go on and tell Steam, "V doesn't own the commercial license for this." Then Steam comes to me and says, like. Can you prove that you owe the commercial license for this? And if I can't, then the game goes down. Okay, but you have an AI generator that allows for commercial use, and you use it for commercial use. If you have an AI generator that allows for commercial use, and you use it for commercial use, then yes, you can do it. Oh, there you go, because there are AI ge image generators that allow for commercial use. I couldn't find any. But like, if, if you can find one that does, then yes, you can use it. I mean, Although even most of them I, I have some kind it, of like subscription deal that also allows for it, like it's it's not that difficult. Yeah, like to find. Me, no, like having a subscription and making pictures for yourself is different than making pictures for a commercial license. Like even when you go to an artist, like let's say you go to Fiverr or whatever, and you're asking an artist draw me a succubus, right? Like he will draw you a succubus for personal use. If you want to put it in a video game, or if you want to monetize it, you have to ask the artist for a commercial license. Let's see here. Yeah, but the light if you have the lines, oh God, I don't understand your argument. Like there, are, uh, I'm gonna find the AI that specifically, explicitly says you can use it for commercial use. We we can talk about it after the stream so we don't derail it. But I really looked into this. Yeah, like, but I, I don't think lawyers you did. about this. I mean, I, I've i got a fine list right here, like top 10 for commercial use, top 20, etc. Like, just hmm. Googling it. Are you sure? And, and even then, like, let's say you find one that gives you commercial use, then other people can just take your stuff and use it because you don't really have IP on it. It's like, you, you, it's made by an AI. It's not made by a human being. Well, yeah, but that depends on your local legal issues, too. Yeah. I don't think it's that simple. I do not. Mm. But yes, we can move on from the topic. As someone said, Max Shirt thing is the creator of the AI art owners don't want to generate. Sorry, the creators of the AI art generators don't want to take ownership. 
Because then they become liable for people making illegal stuff like CP. That is also a thing, yes. The thing so is, that's nobody knows how work. this legal system works because there's been uh, court cases that have determined both things, that you both do have copyright and you don't have copyright. And even then, I the don't problem. think there's been any legal cases taken to court over it. So in reality, no legal system exists. Well, yeah, I mean, when you have the uh, character AI thing, which is text-based, that it, like, copies Mario and Zelda and shit, and it acts like Mario and Zelda. Like, that, that to me, sounds like uh, a huge uh, trademark violation. Yeah, but that's because it's the trademark. It's not because it's the character made by the AI. It's because you're using the trademark. Yeah, like, you know, like someone goes in, like the, the way character AI works, it's like you go in there and you instruct the AI to pretend to be someone. Like it, it can pretend to be you and it will act like you, right? Um, now, if you do it with a fictional character, so you, you get it to act like Samus Aran, like that is a, a, a huge trademark violation. Yeah, but the... That's that has nothing to do with AI. If you draw that, it's still a <laughs> damn it. It is what it is. Let's let's move on. All right. Anyways, uh, Urashima Otero says Lego did a study when playing with toys. Girls put themselves on the character. Boys become the character. If a girl plays with a Batman, he becomes her. If a girl plays with a Batman, he becomes her. Hmm. I on the it. characters. Boy becomes the character. Aha! So boys become the character, as in they become that character, whilst a girl imposes herself on the character. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, Reaper Null says, Knock Knock was the best character in Kingmaker. Wish they allowed us to play goblins. Goblins. Ah, oh, just all... Mm, horrid enemies. The Real Horse says, Also, watch, I've been playing a lot of reshaping Mars. It's pretty good in my opinion. Certainly a bit clunky here and there, but good. I'm almost done with my uh, my thing on Shadow Empire, then maybe I'll look into it. I'll be a damn video game. Uh, Matliff says, V, gamers will pay for garbage. Do not expect money to force attractive female characters soon. That is true, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you make a good game and, and people pay more... There might be a business thing. And, and take into account, uh, like, the, what the Japanese do, they, they have the video game, but then they also sell merchandise. You know, like, how many people buy Abby from The Last of Us, for example? Mortal Kombat used to do that. Like, Mortal Kombat used to have, like, very attractive women, and then they would sell merchandise. Like, they would have, like, little scorpion statues, and they would have, like, action figures of Sub-Zero, Melina, Kitana, T-shirts... But, like, none of the other Western games have. Like, they... they I- imagine buying Abby from The Last of Us. Like, no one would do that. Or, or that chick from um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, who, who would want that on their shelves? It looks ugly as fuck. Which is very interesting, because, like, Marvel uh, actually did this with Captain Marvel. Like, Captain Marvel in the comic book is, like, eye-gouging level. But they, they had, like, this very pretty and sexy statuette of her that they sold as merchandise. Because they know. Uh, much same says they want AI can replace the middle class. They see group, two groups of people, those that tell AI what to do, and those told what to do by the AI. That is a disturbing future, but not at all an impossible one. I don't know, but like you can have the AI as your co-host and it can replace me. The AI is going to replace a lot of businesses and people. Like the first thing they will replace is the ethos. Because the AI does what the ethos does, except better, and exactly what you and, ask it And to. more wholesome. And more wholesome. The next thing it'll replace is Let's Players, because that too is something that's relatively easy to generate. In fact, we already have the AI is able to do Let's Plays. Or actually, no, it'll replace reaction channels first, because that's even easier. Then Let's Plays, like our end of the spectrum is probably going to be one of the latter ones to be replaced because you need a certain degree of creative thought to address these issues. Though even then, you have uh, huh, you could certainly argue as well that, you know, if you just take every anti-SJW video and cook it together in a soup, you'd come up with common talking points. Did it already can, like... Um ask about anything and say, uh, write about this in the style of Peter Hitchens. And it, it will just give you like the best anti-social justice activist argument you can think of. 
True, but then it becomes that thing. It can only do something that already exists. No. Wait, give me an example. All right, let, let me go on chat okay. GPT and I can type something in. Yes, but everything you find on chat GPT will be something that has already existed. No, that's not how it works. It that compiles it works. things. It creates... Yes, it okay, compiles tell things. Okay, tell me something that you don't the, think exists. What's a database? Exists. All right, the poop toilet. I will ask chat GPT about it. In a world where people are able to have superpowers like telekinesis, but only when pooping on the toilet, how would this affect the military? Do you think anyone has asked this question before, Arch? Do, do you yes. think it's something that... Okay, then tell me something that you don't think has been asked. I don't think anything hasn't been asked. You are asking for the 100% original thought. Yes. Uh, okay, ask it how space flight will work in 5,000 years scientifically. So, so first of all, let me answer the no, question no, that I, I asked. Yeah, I'll, 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 ask, I'll answer that. But apparently, ChatGPT4 thinks that specialized training, soldiers would receive specialized training to develop their telekinetic skills while on the toilet. This may include learning to control the duration and intensity of the shit, as well the precision of aiming it downwards. Portable toilets, in order to take advantage of these powers on the battlefield, the military would likely develop portable toilets or specially designed wearable toilets for soldiers. <laughs> this would allow them to access their telekinetic powers while remaining mobile and protected. Coordinated attacks. The military strategies would develop new tactics that incorporate telekinesis into the battle plan. Soldiers might be organized into telekinetic squads, which would be deployed to do specific tasks, such as moving heavy objects while taking a shit. Psychological warfare. The military could also use these powers for psychological warfare, as the sudden appearance of telekinetic abilities in the midst of combat could be quite disoriented and demoralizing for the enemy. Espionage. Intelligence agency might employ telekinetic agents for reconnaissance or sabotage missions, leaving their unique powers to infiltrate enemy installations or disrupt critical infrastructure. Okay, that's I'm cute, sorry. but none of that is original. The, what, the fact that like soldiers would be trained to, to um, defecate for the longest amount as possible, as well as to aim? in the toilet or have like portable toilets on their ass while they're moving around on the battlefield so that they can uh, use their telekinetic powers like even i didn't think about that no but military training that is just military training military soldiers will be trained to use the tools at their disposal all right so so you wanted me to ask what um I, okay, how I literally tell it fight? what what has not uh, never been invented because the, the what thing has is, never it, been it invented? draws upon a database, V. It, it can't make anything. It is like, well, that, that's how the human brain works. Like, like when, when we decide something, it's, it's based on our previous knowledge. Like, we have a database in our brain. And, and when we interact in every day, we, we draw from our lived experiences, right? Like, you, you can't, like, think of a new color either. You can like, really? we have we have invented concepts for this, V. Like, gravity. ChatGPT cannot describe gravity before we ah. invented gravity. But but did you know that some of the latest vaccines have used AI technology to help research them? I'm sure they have, but that is used based on scientific data. It is only I mean, using known quantities. Of course it can code. It, it can, yes, but like it can code new stuff, like it can code a new game. Like if I of ask it, for it example, to, to, all right, I can ask it. To, to, to write me the George Floyd movie in the style of H.P. Lovecraft. Yes, and it'll simply write you the George Floyd movie in a style that it knows, H.P. Lovecraft. Yes, but like, it doesn't know the George Floyd movie. It's never been made. No, no, but V. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A person thinks that the AI is just drawing stuff from a database with zero creativity, how do I persuade them that it is not the case? While it is true that AI models like ChatGPT are trained on large database of text and don't possess creativity in the same way that humans do, they are capable of generating creative novel responses based on the context and the input they receive. To persuade someone who believes AI is only drawing from a database with no creativity, try the following. 
<laughs> Listen, Arch. Explain how the AI models work. Start by explaining how AI models like GPT are trained using deep learning techniques, which involves training the model on vast amounts of text data from patterns, grammar, context, and content. The AI doesn't merely copy-paste information from a database. It generates responses based on the patterns and knowledge it has learned during the training. Highlight the ability to generate novel response. AI like ChatGPT can combine different pieces of information from their training to create something new, coherent, that didn't exist before. This ability to generate original content demonstrates a level of creativity, albeit that to human creativity. It goes out and gone and it's like giving me like 20 stuff. Yes. Compare AI to human learning. Draw it parallels between how from humans a learn. Database. Yeah, but th this is what it says. Draw parallels between how humans learn and how AI models learn. Just as human acquired knowledge and skill from various sources, so too AI can improve what it already knows. Creativity in humans often involves combining existing knowledge in new ways, and AI models can do the same thing similar, even if the process is different. I mean, I, I don't think you played with AI too much. What do you mean? Like, literally, it just told you. It draws its response from the database it has access to. That is all it uses. Like, you need to tell it. Like, let's go even more basic. The reason why the AI cannot create anything is because if you just sit there, V, and stare at your screen, the AI won't speak to you. You need to provide That's it with input. You need to give correct. it the creative direction. So, so basically, if there was an AI that would talk to you without giving it input, you would say that is creative? No, because the creative, the AI must be programmed with access to the database. Like, literally, you need to provide it with access to the things it bastardizes for it to be creative. It cannot create anything. All it can do is randomly so, smash bits and pieces together. So how would you look at an AI that's creative? Like, how would that look like? It doesn't exist. An artificial intelligence cannot be creative as far as we know, because it cannot be alive as far as we know. It must be crafted. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, in the future. Yeah, but, like, in the future, like, how, how, would, you, how would you view... An a, a true AI. It can't exist. Mm. I see. Like the thing is, like the entire thing is, when it creates something, it does so based on the information you feed it, and it does so based on the information provided to it by another human. What if it learns? Like for example, you know, you you forget to tell it. Yeah, how but to it walk doesn't learn. <laughs> No, but I'm saying, like, if you create something... Yeah, but what learn. if? What if it doesn't learn, V? Well, okay. And I was trying to ascertain, like, how the AI would look like based on your definition. And you're saying it can't exist. I'm like, okay. Well, an artificial intelligence would be an intelligence that we created, which means it wouldn't be... It would simply, again, just be a database. So the Terminator from, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, would you say that is an AI? No, it's a complex algorithm. All right, so we're just arguing semantics and definitions then. <laughs> That's one way to view it. Because the, yeah, because the Terminator would be able to create a new weapon. Would it? Well, it created the plasma rifle. And the plasma rifle is unknown technology. I mean, in their universe, it used to be. Like, until Skynet created it, it didn't exist yet. Okay, but what is the concept behind the plasma rifle? Is it completely unknown? But the, the, hold on, that's literally how human creates stuff. Like, you, you don't have a caveman, like, all of a sudden creating um, the plasma rifle. Like, like there, there's a process that goes from A to B to C to D and so forth. Well, no, you do have that, because we have created that. Like, humanity has created... Like, everything we have is something humanity has created from nothing, V. Well, no, the steam engine requires fire in order to create. Like, you, you, yes. you can't have the steam engine unless How you create How did we fire figure first. out fire, V? It's a natural phenomenon, probably, that people went like, oh, some lightning came over here and it burns. Yes, and we didn't know how that worked, so we figured out how that worked. What has an AI created by itself with no human input? All right, but like, that, that is... Also saying that a human being would not be able to create without other humans, because, like, you live in a no. society, hashtag. No, because, again, everything around you has been created by a human. Like, an AI in a vacuum creates nothing. Humans in this vacuum created our entire civilization. Uh, well, you know...
I'm, I'm curious asking it what a woman is to see if it's going to come up with a creative response to that. Create an AI on a database on a database created entirely on other AI generated text. Again, you come up with the problem of the the egg, the the chicken and the egg, because you will have at its basis the human information. I mean, I think it's just a philosophical definition that we're talking about right now, which is you know based on words and semantics. Like at the end of the day, if you have a robot that tricks you into believing that it's a hundred percent human, and it can trick you that it's creating stuff and it can replace your job and everything you do. Like, does it really matter any, about like the definitions and the philosophical implications? Like if yeah. you have an AI creating a because movie we're not talking and everyone about, enjoys the movie. We are not talking yeah. about a philo philosophy here. Again, a machine, like if you don't do anything with chat DPT, it does nothing. The only thing the AI does is react to human input. And the only difference okay, is like, how long that input is. No, I, I get it. I get it. But like, th does it matter? Like, in the, if in the future you have an AI that's programmed to be self-sustainable, right? Like, it, it, it's kind of like the Terminator, um, and it makes a movie, and everyone watches the movie and likes it, and it replaces the job of the director, the actors. Like, it, it just does it by itself. Does it really matter at that point? Well, you've just extended the line. Like I said, it's just the question of the extent of the chain. Again, if you yeah. make the AI and then tell it keep writing stupid shit for a thousand years, how many years must pass before you decide, oh, that was original? No, you just tell it, like, act like a human. And it does act like a human. Like, it's just kind of like uh, in that video game, what's it called? Um, uh, the, the, the Life is Toaster, Detroit. But it doesn't act like a human. No, but if it will, right? Like, if yeah, in but the it future, doesn't. like, 30 years from now. No, I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, 30 years from now, if it will, like, that would be an AI. And even if you'd say, well, it's not, what difference does it make? Like, it will still replace your job. Yes, that, is, that may very well be true, but it can still only create what it already been fed, and it can only create that based on input it is given. It is an artificial thing. That is why we call it artificial so, intelligence. One last question. One, one last question, because I, I don't want to argue, like, uh, you know, and, and have, like, this um, debate. But what if an AI discovers spaceflight? But, V, every argument you make starts with what if magic. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if you would accept the definition of an AI. Like, okay. if there is something that it can do, and, and once it reaches that level, you'd be like, okay, fine, this is an AI. Okay. My definition of an AI is when you put a Macintosh computer in a vault and it figures out how to break out. So basically, like, it does something that... No yes. one else would be able to think on how to do it. Okay. No, no, well, an crazy. AI does something. An AI does anything at all without human input, without human interference, without being created by a human. So basically, if an AI would create another AI. No, because even that like would be Skynet... based on a database given to it by the human. So, so basically, like, the Terminator doesn't follow, even if it's made by Skynet. But, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we... No, okay, fine, let's move on, let's move on. I, I understand. We're, we're, we're going to agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, Jesus. People in the chat says that I'm cheating. <laughs> War Turkify says V is chatbot confirmed. Uh, the real hostnator says, holy hell, I see why the campaign fell apart. <laughs> oh, heavens. And he also says, it sounds like the unmoved mover issue. Sort of. And uh, Cero says, AI ML mirrors organic neural networks, the idea of self-aware AI ID, artificial general intelligence, where the model could be potentially self-aware. So, in that case too, I still see it as just a toaster, because being self-aware is, well, it's a trick of the mind. You exist because you exist. Do you know you exist? How can you prove that you exist? Can you prove to me that you are a thinking human being? Can anyone in the chat prove to me that they are a human being? Etc, etc. It'll be the same with the AI. An AI can be used to mimic a human. Maybe one day it'll even be so good at mimicking a human that you won't be able to tell the difference. 
but it'll still be a toaster, no matter how good it becomes at it. No, I agree with that. But think into account, like there have been so many movies recycled lately, that would you be able to tell if Ryan Johnson is an actual human or an AI? I don't think Ryan Johnson is a human. So you're thinking he's an AI? No, I think he's scum. Mm. I think he's a little bit weird. I don't like him. But if humans were created by God, would you think that from God's point of view, like humans are intelligent? The, if you fucking throw <laughs> one more what if magic at me, I swear to God, I'm going to bring your fucking neck. <laughs> Gabriel Natia says, ask V if the AI has initiative. You can actually create an AI that has initiative, but it would be on certain parameters. But at one point, like there, there would be so many. If if you were to have like a quantum computer, and you manage to somehow like code all of the parameters um, that that would simulate the same initiative that a human have, you could probably do it. Yes. Well, that's the thing. At at the core of the issue, artificial intelligence cannot exist because all intelligence is not artificial. Whenever you begin with an artificial basis, you do not have intelligence. You have a script. And no matter how complex that script becomes, it is still a script. If you manage to simulate the neurons and the way the brain works without simulating the script. No, so, so you're basically like creating the neural network. We have you're already done like that. The... It has created nothing. Like we can create neural networks. It does nothing. Like, it's the same as when you make a hyper-complex computer and you just put it in a corner. The com the computer but, does nothing. Well, I, I guess it's like if you have a human on an island, isolated, with, with no interaction from the exterior, like, just, sorry, a human in a room that's white with four walls and nothing there, hypothetically. Like, that human is not going to invent shit. It's not going no, to write No, but that shit. human is going to do things. Like, if that human is a blank form... Full, fully grown human, that human will mm -hmm. start looking at his environment. He'll start absorbing data. He'll start touching the walls. He'll start licking the walls. He'll start shitting himself. He might even start like putting the shit in a corner to only make one pair, one place smell, etc. If you put a PC in that room, it will simply just sit there. It won't turn on. It won't start looking around. It won't start shitting itself. It'll just be a PC in a room. No, I understand what you're saying. Mark Shame says, Intelligence began when Adam ate the fruit of knowledge and learned how to lie. And then he looked at Eve and said, Wow, you're pretty beautiful today. Should we have sex? And see, that biological machines, I disagree with that too, because... There is something about the human, as a dead human won't just turn on either. Yeah, but that's a dead human. Like, you have ended the human. You have killed the human. You have stopped it from being what it is, the human. It would be the same as if you smashed the PC. The PC wouldn't turn on I either if you smashed it. The debate we just have now is probably going to be, like, the same debate that our grandchildren will be having. Well, it doesn't have to have a body to do something its own. You could just see if it was reading data. Like, if you put that PC in a blank room, and you told it to do nothing just on its own, it wouldn't do anything. Like, you could monitor it, you could look at it, like, does it try to sense its environment? You could even do, like, an AI network thing, like a bunch of drones in the room with a body. And if it still, it still doesn't have to do anything, because without input, it doesn't do anything. Because at the beginning like the of way... it all, it always boils down to input. If you don't turn on the machine, the machine doesn't turn on and doesn't do anything. So the way it works, like you, you create the way the AI learns, that's the neural network, and then you feed it the information. But you can create the neural network so for the AI to search the information. Like, for example, there are AIs that just log on the internet and they search for the information and they input themselves. I don't know. That's because AI doesn't have needs. Make AI that needs to poop, and that's the input again. Again, it always starts with input. 
you cannot get around that thing, that the AI needs a start button. It needs to be activated. Yes. Right? That's, that's why it's called artificial, though. Well, yes, that is why it cannot be intelligence. Any artificial intelligence cannot be intelligence because it is inherently artificial. It is simply a very long script. Okay, but but now we're arguing semantics, philosophy, and we're moving. No, on circle, we're so. arguing observable reality now. Okay. Jonathan Smith says, "Art is right. As a CS major, AI are misnamed. They are statis statistically relevant, statistical relevance engines. The big problem is humans anthropomorphize too much. You are inherently thinking it is human because it appears to be intelligence." Yes. Well, that is correct. We had we don't have AI yet, so I do agree with that. Like none of the 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 quote unquote AI models are actually AIs. All right. There is all the super chats for today. Thank you all very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you all again next week. Till then, have a very very good day, and uh, hopefully. You can pop on over to the next stream as well. And so let me actually remember to do the redirect thingy as we will be playing some Baratrauma in a very short while. There. Have a good day.